on pregame on a Friday night. It is Phil Casper and I just looked at each other and said, is this week six? Yeah. And I said, yes, sir. Yes, it is. Hard to believe. And then I responded by saying, heck, I'm on the wrong week. <laughs> no wonder I don't know Jeez. exactly what we're looking at for this week. It is flying by once Man, again, no as it doubt. always does. This week uh, was a big day yesterday for the Wakefield Bombers, and Coach Lad Braden really excited about how his boys especially performed. And he, he should be. I mean, this team has a chance to really make some noises as we head into the postseason. They did very well yesterday at Lincoln, a hot day. Not what you would expect in at this time of October, but Brock Barrett, uh, the senior, in fact, the lone senior on that boys' squad, third place overall, 1918, followed very closely, five seconds by Jonathan Bowen in fourth, and then Wakefield goes 19th, 20th, 26th. Uh, they did very, very well. Second place, 59 points in that Lincoln Invitational yesterday. And I know he said uh, their goal was to beat Natoma because he's looking ahead to postseason, and, and they did. did. They, they did, did that, it. so he's very, very excited. Girls' side, Sierra Otto led the way again. Yeah, she does, and again, they're short on girls this year, so they can't field a team, but Sierra Otto and Cassidy Tilly continue uh, to compete. Otto goes uh, 28th overall, 33-29, followed by Tilly in third. 31st overall. I'm going to go to last Saturday because the Clay Center Tigers and Lady Tigers went into that Junction City Invitational. This uh, features Manhattan, Mays, Wichita North, Salina, Hayes, Hutch, Great Ben. Are you getting a picture? Uh, there's big time teams that they go up against and it's always a good experience for them. Uh, the Lady Tigers finished third as a team behind Manhattan and Wichita North. That is impressive. That's very impressive. And they were led by Mariah Larson who took 8th place, 14th for Andrea Chestnut, Savannah Kipfer and Emma Smith went 21st and 24th, and then Haley Peterson, Zoe Ald, and Katie Schlichter, 30, 38, 39. Uh, They were led on the JV girls by Mallory Owen and Karin Larson, who went 2nd and 10th. On the boys' side, it would be uh, Caleb Siebold, another top 10 finish, 7th place at this event. And again, that's a big-time event. Caleb Rookstool, 19th. Wyatt Kipfer took 54th. Josh Kelly, Michael Brinkman, Josh Bingos, Tyler Shirley, all in the top 70. Uh, on the day, they would finish in uh, ninth place overall. But again, uh, that is just a great opportunity for them to uh, to take part in that. Also on the JV, uh, top two and the top 40 were Chaz Brandhorst, 31st, and Mason Alberg, 38th. Again, that was at Junction City. Tomorrow they head to Salina. Tomorrow, not as busy a day as it's been for uh, some of the teams around the uh, KCOY community in really all sports, and that's likely because... We're getting close to the postseason. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> I can't even believe we're, we're that close to the postseason. Well, in fact, the uh, Lady Tiger tennis team at regionals today and tomorrow in Lindsburg, so their postseason has gotten underway. Wow. NCKL champion Lady Tiger tennis team. They won that last Saturday. It's, that's huge. Uh, Coach Jeff Edwards had a chance to talk with with he and Hannah Callen this week uh, for our YouTube video that we do, the locker room show, and, and uh, he talked about three years ago going in there and I think they got three points last year they were fourth and he said they were kind of in the mix this year they won 16 out of 20 matches and they win the NCKL title well and that's how you get a team back and you, you gotta you gotta respect what what uh, coach Edwards and and coach Young have done with this team by by getting them back first they got numbers out they brought some excitement now they're winning yeah they're going to continue to do that that's how you rebuild a program and they've done it and and congratulations to them nckl title yeah i don't know when the last one was i think it was like 19 years ago it's someone, been a while someone mentioned for sure so, so yeah it's uh, it's good pretty job impressive. lady tiger tennis and hannah callen the only senior on that team yeah that, think about that for a minute yeah, no doubt uh so exciting stuff hopefully they have a big weekend they had really big plans about uh, getting to tomorrow and then that chance to qualify for next weekend at the state championships speaking of uh, postseason the clayson lady tiger golfers uh, had two events this week they go to regionals tuesday uh, the uh, Lady Tigers at uh, TMP out at Hayes. That's an 18-hole event. As Coach Dick Allberg said, it's real golf. They played it down. They played stroke and distance on penalties. And it was uh, Allie Wright Frederick who shot a 97. So she, you know, double digits on, on that course. A fifth-place medal. That's a big one as well. TMP prep. Hayes, Hoisington, they've got teams from all across that uh, area. Eric Alquist, a 102. Rachel Williams, a 106, along with Kirsten Diekman, a 106, leading the way. Then they went to Rossville yesterday and brought home the title. Nine-hole event, 178. Twelve strokes back was host Rossville at the St. Mary's course. Uh, They had five that medaled flip. Uh, Rachel Williams jumps up with a 43, fourth place. Wow. 
uh, 44 from Allie Wright Frederick, 5th. Sid Calloway, 45. That's a 6th place. Addie Mullen, 46, a 7th. Erica Alquist, 49. That's a 10th. And Kirsten Diegman just outside the medals at 52. And as Coach Alberg says, our depth ruled the day. And obviously, you can see those players that have been just outside the medal count now up in the mix all of a sudden. Look down that list. Do you see any seniors on that list? There's not a uh, one. No, no. Not one. So some exciting stuff for Coach Dick Alberg yeah. and Lady Tiger Golf as well. Most definitely. On Tuesday, I had a chance to follow the Clay Center Lady Tiger volleyball team into Concordia. I tell you what, the Lady Panthers, who Clay Center had beaten last Saturday in the Invitational, where Clay Center took third, Concordia came out and, I mean, absolutely blitzed Clay Center. 25-10, 25-17, they won the first match in straight sets, and it was kind of a shell-shocked look on Clay Center's team at that time. Well, and it's, it's, I mean, how can I say this nicely? It's not a terrible thing when that happens at this time of year. It may get your team's attention, and that may be what Coach Robert Moran wanted (laughs) after that first set. You know, maybe... Wakes them up a little bit, right? Is that what we're, the yeah, word we're looking for? Yeah, I think that's a fair, fair term. And then Concordia came and brought it again. They won the first set in the second match. And Concordia is good. Yeah, I mean, they're young and good yeah. and very talented. Uh, and they got it going on Tuesday night, twenty-five uh, twenty-three in the first set. Then Clay Center came back on a win and and really pulled away in the third set of that and, and split the matches on Tuesday. Yeah, which night. is kind of you know maybe maybe what you're looking for a little bit. See how your team responds, and they responded well, without a doubt. They will go to Rossville tomorrow for tournament action uh, two weeks from tomorrow is sub-state volleyball that's tournament not play that's not right <laughs> uh speaking of volleyball let's go to the tvl and in the twin valley league not many teams in action this weekend as we said it's more and more limited as you get into postseason play but uh they do have uh, marysville invitation which features washington county valley heights and hanover three heavy hitters from the tvl i'm going to talk though about real quickly frankfurt their performance this week beating both Washington County and Valley Heights on Tuesday night. That's that's pretty impressive. It is. Uh, in fact, that's extremely impressive. And uh, Frankfurt, you know, you never want to count them out of anything for sure, but they beat two pretty darn good programs mm-hmm. in Washington County and Valley Heights. Washington County, I... I'm not sure where they're ranked, but I know they're they're fairly top they're 10. up there. Yeah, top ten in the in the two A rankings. Yeah, right so now. so not, congratulations to them. Yeah, Hanover's been state ranked. Lynn was early. Hanover uh, has been, and now Lynn knocks off Hanover on Tuesday. So once again, the TVL they're battle tested. By the time the postseason rolls in, we know that it's wide open. I mean, Centralia continues to dominate, and and dominate they will as long as they have the same coach that <laughs> that they've had for for thirty years or whatever. But right. uh, they do continue to dominate. But beyond that, it's wide open. Postseason action starts today. Started today for the Lady Tiger tennis team uh, in uh, tennis regionals. Golf regionals begin on Tuesday. We're getting to that time of year. We're also getting to the time of year where the football season starts to. See a little bit toward that postseason look. We'll see what's happening around the KCLY community on a football Friday next. Hey, Tiger fans, the lights are on, the team is ready, and the coaching staff has put together a successful game plan for tonight's game. Have you thought about your insurance game plan? This is Jim Gearhan with Farmers Union Insurance. Let us help put together a game plan for all your insurance needs. We cover everything from cars, trucks, boats, and motorcycles to homes, combines, and businesses. We can even help ensure your retirement. Stop by and see us at 426 Lincoln Avenue, downtown Clay Center. A proud supporter of Tiger Athletics. Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy has earned the reputation of being a dependable supplier of durable medical equipment. They offer customers cost-effective quality products they need to improve their health and well-being. Lift chairs, shoes for diabetics, canes, bath aids, wheelchairs, knee braces, CPAP machines and supplies, and several other helpful equipment is available. And if you have a prescription to be filled, bring it into Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy for friendly and professional service. Downtown Clay Center. A message from Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement in Concordia. Brutal winter days will be here sooner than you think. Is your home properly insulated to keep the cold outside and keep your energy bills affordable? If not, Geisler Roofing offers several different solutions, including spray foam insulation. At Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement, we've got you covered. Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement, we've got you covered. Back on pregame, joined by Flip Casper, of course, on a football Friday. We talk football right now. Let's start 
Twin Valley League football, and I don't know where you were planning to go, but I want to start with the Washington County Tigers, undefeated 5-0, and coming off a win over Centralia. Anybody that wondered whether this team was for real, I think has their answer right now. Yeah, and that's... We we work too much together apparently because that's where I was going to uh, Washington County at five and zero. They did not just beat Centralia; they beat them right thirty two to six. Got and, up early and just put the hammer down. You know if if and I think if if other league teams and and district teams are looking at Washington County thinking mm, five and zero, I wonder if they're for real. Yeah, think no more. <laughs> uh, they are for real. That was a good win for them, and they've. They've really been pretty dominant in all their wins this year. Yeah, no uh, doubt. I, I mean, no no close games there. And they go into McLouth. I don't know anything about McLouth, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that they're gonna be just fine and continue to dominate. I'll try to get your record on McLouth here uh, before we we break away. As they go, are they on the road? To, yeah, they are on, they the, are road on the road at yeah. McLouth, and McLouth is one and four. Yeah, uh, they've beaten Horton this year, so I look for Washington County to continue to roll. Let's stay in 11-man football with the TVL. Valley Heights goes to Onega tonight. Uh, the Mustangs Mustangs got a win last week over Valley Falls 34-30, Flip. They did. First win of the season, so they're now going to go into Onega, who is also looking for their first win of the season. Onega coming off a rough loss to Wabunsee. So, uh, y- you know, a, te- a team like Onega is dangerous right now. Valley Heights won't overlook them. I agree. Centralia is at Rossville. It gets no easier for <laughs> The Panthers, by the way. Donovan West at Riverside. Troy at Maranatha Academy. Let's slide over to uh, the TVL eight-man matchups tonight. Frankfurt at Pike Valley. Uh, the uh, Wildcats in eight-man football last week would uh, fall to Axtell, but battle them. And Axtell, I think, has put up some really good numbers this year. It was a, a 30-24 final last week. Yeah, Axtell's 4-1, and one, and it's not going to get any easier for Frankfurt either. Pike Valley comes in at 4-1 and one as well, but... You know, anytime you step out of the TVL, it, it, it really never bothers me from watching the TVL <laughs> yeah. because I don't think there is any league tougher. I agree. So I think uh, I think you know Frankfurt's going to go in if they get a win tonight. That's a big one for them. We mentioned Axtell. They go to Southern Cloud at least playing Kansas schools now. It's been an yeah. odd year for Axtell. No, it's been a really odd year for Axtell. And again, they are four and one. Southern Cloud having trouble with numbers again. They do have a win on the season, uh, but again, having some trouble with numbers. Lynn beat Southern Cloud last week, 66-34. They are hosting Blue Valley tonight. Yeah, and this is one of those games that, you know, I think both teams is lo- are looking at one and four. Both teams think they can beat the other. I think this is a pretty good game, um, and I think it's a, a pretty hard-hitting battle for both teams. So we'll, we'll see how it comes out. I think it's a good call on that one. Clifton Clyde goes to Osborne. They lost in overtime to Hill City last week. Yeah, what? Well, Clifton Clyde is a lot better than they have been. You know, they're two and three. Don't let that record fool you. That's a good Clifton Clyde team. Osborne is three and two. That's not the same Osborne team that we saw last year. <laughs> right. uh, and Clifton Clyde, I'm sure, is looking looking at this as a win. So we'll look for the Eagles to get back on track. Speaking of that Osborne team, Hanover tonight. Uh, they survived a battle last week. Oh no, they dominated oh, geez, a, yeah. an undefeated battle last week. Now another big matchup. Lincoln comes into Hanover tonight. You know, it gets tiring talking about Hanover <laughs> and, and and how good they are because they are good. And and Ooh, uh, here comes the big test. Well, no, it wasn't. Well, no, it really wasn't. So uh, we'll see what they do with Lincoln uh, again. Lincoln Lincoln comes off a win. No, they lost to Wakefield last week in a in a pretty tough battle. But Lincoln's three and two. Hanover again, pretty dominant at five and zero. Oh. Bombers are at home against Lakeside Downs. We'll head that direction. Yeah, and I, you know, this is a good matchup, I think, for Wakefield, uh, a Lakeside team that's 0-5. It might be homecoming at Wakefield, I think, tonight. Um, but Wakefield has their injured players back, and they are playing better. Uh, they played pretty well against Lincoln. They're still not 100% yet. I think this is a good matchup at the right time for the Wakefield Bombers. Well, they get those people back. We've talked about that all yeah. year long, and they, they fought through that s- situation, and now maybe they can find some real success. It is the homecoming uh, for the Bombers on the field tonight, and uh, so good luck to the Bombers at home against Lakeside Downs. Let's move to the Mideast League, where Riley County will host St. Mary's tonight. You know, the Falcons made it through that two-week period of Silver Lake and Rossville, and now they're getting back to the things the Falcons love to do. Well, they come off of those of those losses against Silver Lake and Rossville. You wonder how they'll react against Rock Creek, who we've seen, who is very good, uh, and they beat them by two, 36-34. So uh, I look for Riley County to keep it rolling this week as, at St. Mary's. They don't want to overlook 
St. Mary's looking ahead to Washington County, which will be their first district matchup. That district's going to be interesting for for Riley County, Washington County, Marysville only. That's that's a that's a nasty district, and that could you know it's one of those districts that's usually one team is pretty dominant. And I understand Washington County is undefeated, but we've seen Marysville play. We've seen we know what Riley County can right. do. I like that district. Been an interesting matchup. The rest of the Mid-East League, Silver Lake at Rock Creek. Uh, well, Buncey goes to Mission Valley. We mentioned earlier that Rossville is hosting Centralia tonight. Let's move to the NCKL. The uh, Concordia Panthers are sitting at 3-2 and two on the season. Their matchup tonight goes into face the, uh, or they're at home against the Wamego Red Raiders. We just saw the Red Raiders last week. We did, and, and you know, Wamego's good. Concordia has trouble hanging on to the ball. I know I've, I've got a good friend that, that continues to keep me posted, and I hear the same thing week after week. I, I think this is a good matchup for Concordia. Wamigo's coming off some loss, and they have some rough spots uh, that they have yet to fix. I think Concordia coming home is pretty good. Marysville tested them, you know, for like they have everybody. Yeah, and, they have. And uh, again, Concordia had a little trouble with fumbles, but did pull out that win. And I think this is a good matchup for them at home. Marysville at Chapman, a couple of two and three teams. Chapman coming off the loss to their big rival with uh, Abilene last week. Well, we've seen both teams, and I, you know, again, I said early on before the season started, Marysville's going to surprise some people. Unfortunately, it was the Clay Center Tigers <laughs> was one of them. I think they can go into Chapman, and and uh, I, I think this will be a good game. I, I'll, I'll just put it at that. I yeah, think this is a good, hard-hitting matchup. Likely to be maybe low scoring, but uh, uh, yeah, but a, a fight to the finish. Marysville does a good good job controlling the they ball, really and do. and you know Chapman has a pretty good defense and some hard hitting kids on defense. So talk about rivalries as they're all good in the NCKL, but Clay Center at Abilene certainly one that's been storied through the years. The Cowboys are good. Period. Yeah. Period. I mean, they're just they're good, and we knew they would be, and and uh, we knew with that lineup they have, they're big, they're fast, they're they run that offense well, uh, they're well coached. Fans are loud. It's a tough place to go into and play. Next level player at quarterback in Harley Hazlitt. He is a next level player, and maybe not even at football. He may go in right. another direction. He's one of the better basketball players I've ever exactly. seen. And and you know the kid is. If you want to see an athletic quarterback, Harley Hazlitt is a man in the NCKL. He's a fun one to watch as long as he's not playing you. <laughs> play center coming off a big win at at Walmigo, where win. where they did a good job with a lot of adversity. It's so. Um, I, I always like the matchup with Clay Center Abilene. You know that. Absolutely. I'm sure you'll be there. Oh, well, I plan to. <laughs> I, he might. In my mind, I'm already there. <laughs> I can imagine so. Uh, that's going to get us through pregame. When we come back, we'll talk with head coach Todd Rice of the Clay Center Tigers. Flip, as always, enjoy your I will. football Friday. This time of year, many farmers feel like they're juggling too many things at once. Or maybe you're the guy who's trying to keep multiple plates spinning. Well, let us help you. I'm Brent with Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales, and we'll help with fall custom application and knock down those weeds and keep them under control. The blessing of rain and through this year's growing season has led to tough weed conditions. But hit them now, and you'll be glad you did in 2016. Talk with us at Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales. Hey folks, Bill Rice from the Green Team. I want to invite you to come out and try our service department. We have a express lane for oil changes and much, much more. No waiting, 30 minutes or less, with no appointment necessary. Make your vehicle road ready. Or if you need heavier work done, we've got certified technicians that can do jobs from recall work, regular maintenance, all the way to complete engine repair. So come out and see us at the Green Team, 802 West Crawford in Clay Center. What happened? This house is too small. So let's buy a new house. But we can't afford a new house. Money doesn't grow on trees. That's why we'll go to United Bank and Trust. I heard they have low mortgage rates that are affordable for everyone. Well, then let's go right now. Stop and see me, Maria Fitzemeyer, or me, Carla Sweet, at United Bank and Trust to talk about getting your new home loan process started. Or visit us online at ubankonline.com. United Bank and Trust, banking for your way of life. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Last week, the Clay Center Tigers went on the road and climbed back above the 500 mark with a win at Wamigo. Tonight, back on the road again in a rivalry matchup against the undefeated Abilene Cowboys. Tiger pregame is here, being brought to you by Clay County National Bank, B&D Sandblasting and Painting, and State Farm Insurance, David Borgerding Agent. Stay tuned, our pregame talk with Coach Todd Rice is next. 
When you're a student athlete, you carry a lot of responsibility because you represent not only yourself, but also your family, your school, and your community. So whether you're in the classroom or on the court or field, take pride in what you do. Persist in your endeavors and work hard to achieve your goals. These qualities will help you succeed and find fulfillment, not only now, but also in the next chapters of your life. We're proud to support you, Tigers. We're Clay County National Bank, member FDIC. Knowing that we'll be fine tomorrow gives us great peace of mind today. That's why it's so important to ensure your future and your family's. State Farm can help you do it. Thanks to their financial services and agents who can personally advise you on which plans better suit you. Continue enjoying your lifestyle, invest in your business or yourself, and ensure your children's education. Get to a better state. Call David Borgarding at 632-5642 or visit him at 428 Lincoln Avenue in Clay Center. Football season is the favorite time of year for the guys at B&B Sandblasting and Painting. They specialize in sandblasting stock trailers, hay trailers, and semi-grain trailers. They can make your old trailer look like new and maintain its function and value with their high-quality primer and paint. B&D are also experts at installing seamless guttering on your home or business. When their work is done, you can bet they'll be at the football game supporting the Tigers. Give B&D Sandblasting and Painting a call at 632-0696. Back on Tiger pregame, joined now by Coach Todd Rice. The Clay Center Tigers come off a win against the Wamego Red Raiders last weekend, uh, Coach. It was a game that uh, we talked earlier this week. We do the locker room show that uh, people can catch on our on our YouTube page. Uh, that was a It was a chippy game. We tried to explain kind of how it was. It, it, it was just a game that almost got really out of hand. I give some credit, I give a lot of credit to you guys and your players for not letting it get to maybe what would have been the next level. Yeah, it was real unfortunate the things that were happening, uh, you know, on the field, uh, during the play, at the end of the play and stuff. And, uh, you know, we, we constantly talk to our players about their on-field conduct. And, uh, you know, I was real pleased with how our guys uh, conducted themselves, refrained from getting involved in any of that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate. Uh, but our guys kept their focus and, and you know, really kind of, you know, as we focused on the game and maybe, uh, you know, the opponent focused on other things that maybe worked to our advantage. You guys had a really good balance again. Efficient in the passing game. You don't have to go there often, but I want you to talk a little bit about your receivers. We we try to bring them up. We see them block really well, it seems like, throughout this season. But the one thing that has really stood out, game in and game out, when there's been a pass play, is the yards after the catch. They fight for everything. Well, I tell you what, and, you know, uh, very indicative when uh, Baylen Brownfield caught the pass in the flat, and you know, multiple players ricocheted off of him, and uh, you know, I, I said I, I felt like I was watching a Patriots play with with Gronk at tight end. So uh, you know, he really turned that into a physical run. You know, Brady Milliken uh, out on the other edge, not just a physical blocker, but has shown what he can do. Uh, you know, and then Adam Ebert got the really slick uh, bootleg out of the backfield. Those guys, you know, do a tremendous job. They they know that we don't throw a ton, but when we do, they know how effective it is. And uh, you know, those guys are just really bought into what we're doing. I'm going to bring up Tyler Young quickly too in pregame. We get to talk about him quite a bit out in open space, but we've talked on the air uh, throughout the season. Talk about getting extra yardage. That guy has run so physical, I think, this year, along with the, the electrifying plays we know that he can do. Right. And, you know, he always has a physicality. You know, he, he's kind of wrapped in a middle linebacker mentality, you know, with his frame. And, you know, he always wants to hit. You know, he's always been that way. But he's just kind of using it a little bit more to his advantage right now with, uh, you know, how he's cutting and running through the tackles and, and doing those things. So it's just real exciting to see you know the, the improvement fundamentally for him uh which starts with his blocking and the other aspects and then just you know like you said being that explosive guy when he does have the ball and i'm going to move real quickly up to the front row because all the things we just talked about don't happen unless the big boys up front uh, take care of business. And, you know, Marysville was frustrating for everybody. I know I talked to several alignmen, and they just couldn't get any – both teams just couldn't get any footing. It was nice to see them uh, get back out there and really make some things happen for you guys. 
It really did. You know, we continue to work on our pad level and the, and the details of, of their assignments and stuff. And, uh, you know, we, it was quite a physicality uh, mismatch inside. They had a couple uh, extremely big players in there. And, uh, you know, our guys are not getting wrapped up into that, not looking all that, you know, those aspects. But they just go out and they do their job and execute. Let's talk about tonight's opponent, Abilene, undefeated, state ranked. Uh, there's nobody that doesn't know that this team is is really, really good. Uh, what's prep been like for you guys this week to, to face the Cowboys? I think it's been really good. Uh, our guys are real excited about the game last week and a lot of things that we did. I think we got a lot of confidence from it. Uh, you know, our, our kids, I mean, we know Abilene so well and, you know, they know their players and, and their strengths and kind of the mojo of, of Abilene. So I think our guys have been real focused. They realize we're still in the hunt for the NCKL. This is Abilene's last game in league. So, you know, if they defeat us, they win the league. Uh, if we would win, we're still in it. Uh, so, you know, the next four games are, you know, huge stakes to them. And uh, I think our guys are just embracing how much fun it is to be in this situation. It's a great rivalry game every year and should be a fun one tonight as well, Coach. Good luck. Let's go get them tonight. Thanks a lot. Stay with us. Chet's keys to the game are on the way next. Good evening. Welcome to Abilene. Play Center Tiger football on a football Friday night. NCKL action, the final NCKL game for the Abilene Cowboys, Chet. And with Play Center Abilene matching up tonight, if anyone wants to keep Abilene from winning it outright again, the Play Center Tigers are the last man it's on us standing and on the us. tigers would like nothing more than to make this uh spoil this party here on a on a friday night at abilene i know chet when i bring up play center schedule and we target abilene your blood boils a little bit but when this week comes around oh yeah it it increases and when friday rolls in ladies and gentlemen our road trip Chet Carlson is, is ready to go hit somebody, and I mean that literally. You love this rivalry. I really do, and it's so much different when we play here. You know, it's not the same when they come to our house for some reason, but when we come here and the part of its tradition, part of its history, part of it's a lot of history, but, uh, yeah, my blood pressure goes up when we cross the county line and we get in. Get in. It's a great rivalry. I, I have a, a lot of friends in this town. It's a great tradition on both sides. It doesn't matter what the records are. They decide when this team matches up with that team, it's always great. And when two teams are playing pretty well, mm -hmm. both these teams are. Three and two play center coming off a win at Wamego. Abilene State ranked. They're undefeated at 5-0. We all know about this team. Let's talk about Chet's keys to the game. There are two really that stand out to you as we go to this uh, football Friday. Yeah, we're going to make it simple. We're going to nail it down to one on offense and one on defense. And the offense got it going last week. We had an undersized offensive line against the larger sized Wamigo line last week. We got the offense rolling downhill. We got a few things working. If we get that happening tonight, because we're going to be matched up very similar, they're going to be a little bit bigger on the other side of the line, but we've got some bubbles in there that know how to do work. And so if we can get that going, the backs run hard, we find our holes, we make our reads, we make our pitches. Um, that's what it'll take on all. Coach Rice said this offensive line for the Tigers, the IHOP crew. I love that ter term that uh, Jacob Blackburn gave them. This crew doesn't get caught up in what's on the other side. They just do their job, and that's really what you're talking about. Now, when you talk defense, mm -hmm. there's one guy you have to pay attention to on this football team. And I really really always try to refrain from doing this in a high school football game, but sometimes you have to. And when you're playing against a, a talent like Hazlitt, he's a senior now. We played against him as a sophomore. He is exceptional. He is, he is really, really athletic. He's really, really good. Will, our key on defense is to stop him. And sometimes you have to sacrifice something somewhere else to stop him, and, and that might be our key tonight. Why is that a key, Chet Carlson? Well, let me tell you. Harley Hazlitt, 6'4", 190-pound senior, next-level athlete, as you heard Coach Rice talk about him. 662 yards on 73 carries this year, 11 touchdowns. That's rushing the football. Throwing it, 25 of 39, 442 yards, and that's including four touchdowns and no interception. So the right. guy is very, very talented. We were talking on the way here. It was right. two years ago. Chase Salter went down with an injury, and we thought, well, maybe there's a window. And yeah. this guy steps in as a sophomore and lit us up. Yeah, we're thinking, oh, the sophomore's in, you know? <laughs> and 
then we're thinking, let's get this sophomore out. I mean, he was, he was amazing. And all he's done is mature and grow and get better since then. He will play somewhere next year if he wants to. And he's a, he's a good kid. The uh, Tigers, along with our studio engineer, Gary McPherson, Dr. Stad is back, Kerry Carlson, Randy Chet Carlson, back from D.C. Glad to have you alongside an O'Meyer and Congress. We'll be listening tonight as well at another football game. It is alma mater in Manhattan. Absolutely. Play Center did win the toss. They deferred. Abilene will receive. The Tigers will defend the North Goal here at Cowboy Stadium in Abilene. Beautiful. It's a beautiful out here. It man. is perfect for a football Friday night, let me tell you. The Tasty Pastry kickoff from Levi Fitzemeyer about to get us going here on a football Friday, and it's kicked right down the middle, end over end. going to be taken back at the 17-yard line to return to the middle and taken out down to the 35, near the 37-yard line. The tackle is going to be made across the field from us, and it looks like it is a tackle made by the Tigers on the play, Gavin Seabold. So it'll be Abilene with the first offensive look. Tigers defensively line up like this. It will be up front. Balaam, Brunfield, Dylan Carlson at the end. In the middle, Garrett Craig, Kevin Ware, we'll hear him, see him both inside. Parker Folks in there as well. The linebackers, Hunter Mullen, moves inside along with Chase Casper, Adam Ebert, and Anthony Atkinson Inniking. Lane Lively, the safety, and then you have Peyton Lane, Tyler Young, Brady Milliken, the cornerbacks. The Tigers on the first carry sees Harley Haslett go, and the ball is loose. It is going to be a loss of yardage. The Tigers really saw Haslett kind of being very, very patient, Chet. And then they tied it up, kept him enclosed, and eventually he lost the football, recovered it, but four yards deep at second and long. Oh, it was a great stop by the Tigers. I, re- I forgot that about Hazlitt. Watching him the last two years, he is always patient, and he's looking for his holes, and then he can explode. That time we knocked the ball loose, almost came up. That defensive line for the Tigers, they have to make collisions, they have to cause a wreck, and then let the other guys come clean it up. That time, everybody just contained and made a play. Here is Haslett again. He's going to run it one more time. Second and long. Chase Casper, the first contact. This will be third down and long. He gains about five, but it's third down and eight. And the freak, Chase Casper, made the first contact on Harley Haslett. And Chase Casper has been in on highlight plays for three weeks of this football season on defense, just making hard hits. Phelan Brumfield there to help clean up a little bit, too. The Abilene offense with Haslett at quarterback has Parker O'Neill, the fullback. The tailback is Trey Bender. And receivers down at two to both sides. They're actually two to the right side, one to the left. Two backs alongside with Haslett in the backfield. Third down and eight from the gun. Once again, he's back to pass for the first time. Has a lot of time. Fires across the middle. Has a receiver. Catch is going to be made downfield by the Cowboys. And that's the first contender, Ryan Wilson. Remember, his older brother was the starting quarterback and... Uh, both great basketball players, but Ryan Wilson caught a bunch of passes this year. 261 yards and a TD coming into this game, and a big convergence there on uh, third down and long. It's first and 10. It's Abilene now at the Tiger 41 yard line. The last time Haslett had quite a bit of time back there to pass, he was able to throw in between all the coverage. A big game for the, for the Cubs. They split the tight end, Ben Beach out wide on the right. Here's Haslett wanting to run it again. Starts towards the middle, now caught into a crowd. He'll gain. Three, maybe four yards on the play. Tigers did a good job to contain Hazlitt right now, but that pass play, it's tough to uh, keep him in control when he has that much time to throw down field. Second down and five after a five yard pickup on first down. It's 9.46 to go, first quarter, no score. I feel like we're watching Colin Klein from a few years ago, <laughs> you know, with the play calls. Three of the first four play calls are Hazlitt just taking the deep snap back there, waiting for blocks set up, and then he reads off of that tries to pick his goal. Dylan Ford, wide left, two, re- or two backs along with Hazlitt in the back. There's there's looks like there was motion left side. There is a flag down. Now, Hunter Mullen yeah. makes the tackle near the backfield. Well, the there is procedure. It'll be interesting here, Chad. You say decline, but we won't either. get a chance. Yeah, yeah. They, this is before the play, so it's going to be penalty yardage. It'll stay second down, but now second down and nine instead of what would have been third down and about five. But Hunter Mullen New position going inside, and I've heard this week he really likes playing inside linebacker. He has uh, stepped into Gabe Ware's role pretty well thus far. And I can see that out of Hunter. He's a compact type player. Anthony Atkinson, anything going outside linebacker with Ware's injury. Here's Hanslin, handoff for the first time. The fullback dives over the pile and falls forward to the 32-yard line. 
This will bring up third down and short, and that was, uh, again, the fullback, Parker O'Neill, who got over the first contact. He just kind of hurled it and then went downfield for yeah. yardage. Yeah, in the old days, you say, don't lose your, don't leave your feet. Don't try to jump over people. But the Tigers had it pretty pretty well stacked up in there, and he he got oh, he picked up about four more yards after he got over that pile of, pile of tackles. Third down, we'll call it two to go for the Abilene Cowboys. 8.33 to work here in this opening quarter. Abilene with the football. Haslett runs it himself through the middle. He has first down yards, a little bit more. Atkinson and King gets the first contact, but Haslett falls inside the play center Tiger 25-yard line. It's first and 10 Abilene, their second move of the change in this drive. Well, what sometimes happens against an, an explosive player like this and an, and an offense that can, can explode for a big play is you play with a little bit of a soft cushion because you don't want to give up the, the big play. So you find yourself sometimes giving up four, five, and six yards at a time until they just move the chain. As what leaps from the gun, first down and 10. As you're going to run it again through the middle. Initial contact inside. Looks like Parker Folks may have had the first contact. Then the whistle blows before Hazlitt goes down, but he gains short yardage on first down. It'll be to the 20, second down, still seven yards to go. Chase Casper has to come off his helmet popping off during that play, so the Tigers will bring on to the field Brandon Loader in his position on the inside linebacker. Brandon really played well last week. At Juanigo, he had to step in when Gabe Ware went out and played a really good inside linebacker position. Second down and seven for the Cowboys. It's at the Tigers' 20-yard line. Hazlitt hands it off, and initial contact near the line of scrimmage. Tigers do a good job here to wrap up and pull back the ball carrier. That's O'Neal, and O'Neal late with a punch at Atkinson Inniking. That's going to be a personal foul after the play was done. That'll move them back 15 yards on a uh, just a really uh, – Inexcusable play by O'Neill. That well, that was a big stop on second down. It was second and eight. And that was a big stop by the Tigers. And there was the Tigers were trying to strip the ball on that play. But after the play was over, the runner was frustrated for being stopped and what have you. And he, he made a little gesture and a little flail of his arms there, a little bit of a punch. And there were several flags that came in. So the football moves back now to the 35 yard line of the Clay Center Tigers. Now it's third down and a Pretty good taxi ride for the Cowboys with 7-12 to work in this opening quarter. Third down, and we'll call it 21. It's at the Tiger 35-yard line. So now some room for the Tiger defense to work check. Oh, absolutely. This is this is the stop opportunity. The stop opportunities that the Tigers need on this possession. Inside, dig it in. Garrett Craig, you see Parker Folks in there. The end, Dylan Carlson. Back to pass. Haslett, short yard, he's pickup, and it's going to be a tackle made near the line of scrimmage. That is Parker Folk, who makes the tackle that time on the Cowboys receiver. Downfield, Trey Bender, nothing. It's fourth down, still 21 to go, and Parker Folk's cutting by jersey from behind. And you say scout team. Yes, say, yeah, I okay. mean, they might run this. This is your key. If you see this, this, this back and the line do this, you peel off. Parker did a great job. It's an great. interior lineman, Chet, making a play on a receiver. Absolutely. Don't you love that, huh? All of our all of our interior linemen anymore are these athletic guys. Right. Fourth down, 21. They will line up to go for it. Abilene with 6.06 to work here in the opening quarter. Haslett out of the gun. Empty backfield now. He steps back in the pocket. Holds. A lot of time to look. Downfield throw. Pass is caught. And it's going to be close to a first down. It appears to be just short from our angle. Let's see what the officials say. Two yards short. Two well. yards short. That'll be Clay Center's football if we read it right. And they are going to wave it. And yep. it is Clay Center's football, a big stop. Fourth and 21. They got 19 shots, but they did 21 yards. Dr. Stat was on that one with uh, this two-yard score on the play. It's hard to tell from the far side. It was a good completion on the Cowboys, but they needed 21. They got 19. Cade Wallace will bring the Tiger offense onto the field for the first time. What a stop for that Tiger D to get it done. Up front, McCabe Mellius in the middle. Parker Folks, Jace Casper to one side. Jacob Blackburn, Delaney Carlson off to the left side. Baylor Brumfield is the tight end. You see Cade Wallace going under center. He has Adam Ebert behind him, Hunter Mullen, and Tyler Young on the back. So the Wallace keeping the left side. It's a room to run. It pitches late. Tyler Young on the sideline. 
first down and more. He's knocked out of bounds. That's first and ten Tigers. They'll take it out to their own 36-yard line. Oh, I love what the Tigers showed that time. They had good blocking on the on the left side, but but with the back and with the lead back and with Cade Wallace and with Tyler Young and that pitch came late. Cade ran for quite a while with that ball before he pitched to Tyler Young. Yeah, late pitch downfield. That's a 20-yard gain for the Tigers on a pitch and run from Cade Wallace to Tyler Young. And now you'll see a lot of ball control for the Tigers. First and 10. Hunter Mullen went in motion. Now the Tigers go back to their original formation. Very tight. Nobody wide. And now they'll get the ball from the sideline before they put the play in motion. First down and 10. And off this time underneath. It is Adam Ebert fighting for yardage. He'll get out near the 39-yard line. A gain of three, maybe four yards on first down. The Tigers take it over here at 5.30 to go. Opening corner. Scoreless after a stop against the Abilene Cowboys on that first drive. Tough yards inside. The offensive line moving in forward. Adam Ebert fighting for those yards. About four yards on the run. Tigers split receivers to both sides. from field left. Billick into the right side. Ebert, the lone back behind Cade Wallace. Second down, and we'll call it seven after a three-yard gain on first down by the Adam Bomb. Here's Wallace now moving in under center. The Cade Bellion. Wallace looks left side, keeps it himself, scores forward. He's got some room. First down yardage for the move. The 39 time All Star kick. Murphy, Cade Wallace, first and 10 Tigers. Tell you what, while Cade Wallace was picking up that first down, Adam Ebert was taking a beating because four guys thought he had the ball. Nelligan comes wide left. Now Brumfield to the right side. They'll also slot a receiver to the right to the Tigers. Hunter Mullen is the one wing back right. Ebert stays behind Cade Wallace. First and 10 Tigers with 439 to work here in the opening quarter. Scoreless, but driving a near midfield. Wallace works right side, keeps it, falls forward, gets two or three yards on first down carry. It'll be second down and probably eight, it looks like, to go for the Tigers. Maybe second and nine. Seeing a lot of assignment football out there on both sides of the ball. The right. defense the Tigers played first possession. Defense athletes playing here. They're playing assignment ball. Tigers go quick to the line of scrimmage. I understand they're trying to go quick. They, they would love ball control and time control on the clock. But they go quickly to the line of scrimmage. Then they stop, look to the sideline. And now ready to work with a tight formation. Both receivers up near the line of scrimmage. Wallace under center. Second down eight. Right side. Pitch out right. This is Hunter Mullen to the outside right. Now cuts it inside. Looks for a blocker. Breaks off a tackle. He gets through the sideline and out of bounds. Let's see where they march him down. There's a penalty flag late on the play. It appears he has first down yardage. We'll see what the penalty is at the end of this run. It came in very late near the sideline, well away from us here at the booth. The initial call would be maybe first and 10, but we'll right. see what the penalty is. Well, lots of times if it's a blocking penalty, it comes earlier. Lots of times if it's a defensive penalty, it comes later, but who knows? It's a personal it foul, and it's on Abilene. My first clue was they were talking to Cade Wallace in the middle of the field, and then you saw the call on the sideline, personal foul against the Cowboys, and now the Tigers with 339 to work, opening quarter, at the ball well inside Abilene's end of the field and marching. That's the second personal foul against yeah. the Cowboys. I was going to point that out. In this possession, after a big stop on defense, Cade Wallace looks to the sideline. He has a receiver wide left. That's Taylor Brumfield this time. And Tyler Young has not been on the field the last few plays. I don't know if we have him out there yet, but Hunter Mullins been the uh, lone wing back. Adam Ebert behind Wallace. They'll pitch it late. This is going to be outside. Riley Griggs got to carry to the left sideline. He's going to be knocked out of bounds. Inside the 20, Riley Griggs, we know the speed. And what a read again from Murph Wallace, Chet. That's a late give right. to Riley Griggs, who does the rest with his leg. Yeah, Kate keeps it till the last moment now, and he'll keep it if he can. And he pitches these balls pretty late. Good late give to Riley Griggs. Good. Up by Second down, short. Tigers going quick. Wallace will take it himself on a quarterback keep. He gets it inside the near the 15 yard line, I should say. That'll be first and 10 Tigers. And Clay Center has scripted this start to the game about as well as you could 
half. Aveline was driving. Then you make a big-time defensive play. Yeah. Then you get the football back, and now you methodically march it downfield. Absolutely. We've had the ball about two minutes and 40 seconds at this point. Two big personal foul penalties on them. We've moved the chain several times on our own. And nobody was ready in the interior for that quarterback push there when we got first in. Down to 248 to work here in the opening quarter. No score. Tigers, though, driving. They have it at the Abilene 16-yard line. Taking a long time to go into the fourth center. They have the five count on. Wallace goes in under center. And we have a penalty or we have a timeout. Tigers going to take yep. a timeout before that penalty could be called. First and 10 Tigers at the Abilene 16. 233 to work. We're in the opening quarter. No score here in Abilene. You're listening to Clay Center Tiger Football on 100.9. Central Valley Ag suggests this year you rethink your post-harvest schedule. If this El Nino is as, is as strong as it is and sets in as deep as it does, we could be looking for a wet fall time frame. CVA agronomist Mike Zwingman says get on the list for fall fertilizer, soil samples, or weed control right away. It's really important for us to make sure that as you're harvesting, we get out and get those fields soil sampled almost as soon as you get out of the field with the combine. Get a hold of Central Valley Ag and make sure your fall field work gets done this fall. Along with our studio engineer tonight, Bernie Fancello, we appreciate the work back at home. Rocky Downing, Kerry Carlson, Chet Carlson here on a football Friday. And what a start, Chet, for the Clay Center Tigers here on the road at Abilene. State ranked undefeated and right now threatening to take the opening lead. Well, momentum is so important, and we talk about it all the time, but the Tigers have the momentum at the moment. The other thing I like is we can still pick up another first down without scoring a touchdown. And, you know, the Tigers are, are sitting on the 16-yard line with first and fifth. Jace Casper, Parker Folks, McCade Melius, Jacob Blackburn, Dylan Carlson would have nothing more than to move this football downfield another 15, you know, 16 yards in the next, in the next uh, four plays because they have done the job thus far. Here's Wallace, late pitch left side, rigs again to the outside. He gets near the 10. That'll be a pickup of five, maybe six yards. It'll be second down. You know, the other thing I like talking about with Riley Griggs is his speed. You know, we've got him out there taking these pitches. If he gets the corner, he's a sprinter. Well, we know Tyler Young has not been in there the last few plays, and we'll wait to find out why that is. But Griggs and Ebert, they have tremendous speed as well, and we've shown yeah. that off. And probably we're showing a little bit of uh, Abilene keying on Adam Ebert in the backfield. I think so. And then Riley Griggs all of a sudden making some money off of it. Second down here and two to go for the Tigers. It's at the Cowboy 10-yard line. Wallace under center. Ebert behind him. In motion goes Griggs. It'll be handed off underneath. This is Adam Ebert inside the five-yard line. First down and a penalty flag on top of it. He heard Chet make the call. (laughs) Sorry about that. No, Kerry was throwing the flag from up here. Chet made the call audibly. And it is the right call, and the Tigers had a first and goal regardless. Well, sometimes they get a hold of the handle, and uh, the head starts to clear around with that grip, and that's what happened. It was easy to see for us, and obviously for the officials, the flag came in immediately. But how about, regardless of the penalty check, the yeah. fact that the Tigers have marched this football all the way inside the five now, first and goal. Absolutely. It's ball control offense. It's moving the chains, and it's methodically taking control of this ball game. And the clock right now, no doubt. 2.15 to work opening quarter. They've kept Abilene off the field. A payoff of six would be huge for the Tigers. At the three-yard line, Cade Wallace dives right side. He's down to the one, almost to the goal line. He went right behind Parker Folks and Jace Casper that time to the right side. Inside two minutes, first quarter, no score, but the Tigers are knocking heavily on the door right now. And this is where we can't really see where it is, you know, in a, right. in a game like this. We're depending on the scoreboard. It says second down. Tigers go quick. Wallace got the staff and was snowed under immediately. I don't think he got to it. It'll be third down and goal. From about the two, probably still. Tigers try to go quick that time. So still around the two-yard line, maybe inside the two. We're calling it They're one. calling it the one. Third down and goal is the one the Tigers. At the Abilene one-yard line. If IHOP wants to make some pancakes, this is the time for the Tigers here in the opening quarter against Abilene on the road. A minute 18 to work. A minute 9, I should say, to work 
in the first period. Cade Wallace under center. They've gone quarterback keep first two time. Third down, handoff right. No, Wallace keeps it, dives right side. Is he in? Touchdown, Tigers. Murph, Wallace punches it in off the right side. The fake to Evers. Wallace keeps it, and the Tigers go up with 57 to go in the first quarter, 6 nothing. What a great read by Cade Wallace. Was. He didn't go with the quarterback sneak right up the gut. He kind of took it, and he ran a little bit off that right guard, maybe even the B gap. I couldn't tell there, but he, he picked his hole and, and found a way to cross that goal. And he waited to make that read because it would have been easy to give it to Ebert and just think it's going in, but instead he pulled it right side, and the Tigers lead it 6-0. Peyton Lane now on for the extra point. Hunter Mullen is the holder, Parker Folk's long snapper. It's there, the kick is up, and it is good. The Tigers lead 7 0 here in Abilene. 57 seconds to work, opening quarter. What a start for Clay Center against undefeated Cowboys here on the road. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. Twin Valley is proud to announce their free Twin Valley Wi-Fi Zone, available to all fans at Unruh Stadium. With Twin Valley Wi-Fi, you can share the moments from the game with all your friends and family. Listen to the game on the KCLY app, post Instagram pics, tweet updates of the game, and update Facebook all for free without using your valuable cellular data. Enjoy the game and go Tigers from your friends at Twin Valley. This harvest, producers that planted one of the high-quality wheat varieties or a blend from Oldie Seed are recording significantly better yield results. Varieties like Hot Rod, WB4458, and WB Cedar are high-yielding wheat varieties that deliver exceptional yields and good test weights. If you want the highest quality seed, make it a point to plant an Oldie Seed wheat variety or blend this fall. Call Oldie Seed at 877-692-4555. Tigers lead Abilene now after a 85-yard drive on 12 plays, seven nothing. Kate Wallace punched it in on a option play. It was a belly option. He pulled it out of Adam Ebert. He pushed it in the right side. Then Peyton Lane knocks in the extra point. And I loved it. I got a stat after this kickoff. Here's the tasty pastry kickoff. It's going to be Abilene taken back at the 20-yard line. Return to the left side, and now a tackle is going to be made at across the 35. Good return for the Cowboys. That return comes from the Abilene Cowboys that time, Trey Bender. Stat. Chet, talk to me. Okay. 12-play or twelve play drive. You already said that. A 12-play drive. We didn't hit third down in that drive until the touchdown play. That was our first third down. We were always on either first or second down that entire, the first 11 plays of that drive. Tigers again lead Abilene 7-0 after that drive. And again, they kept moving the chains without getting to third down until finally they uh, got down to the goal line. Here's Hazlitt to the middle. He gets it out to the 45-yard line. Good carry. Tigers stand him up. He never went down, but he ran downhill for a while. Picks up good yardage on first down. Yeah, he got pretty close to uh, moving the chains. We're going to call it a gain of nine on that play before the Tigers got the stop. So your Tigers again up here early. 7 nothing on the road at Abilene. Undefeated. State ranked. This is the last NCKL game for the Cowboys. They at least have a share of the NCKL crown. If the Tigers though can win tonight, they still have a chance to tie for that NCKL championship. Twelve seconds left. We'll see if Abilene runs a play or not. Hazlitt from the gun. He will snap it and run it. He will take it himself left side. Now cuts in the middle. He's into the open field. He may be gone. He is. No flags down. Hazlitt is gone. That is his 12th touchdown carry of the year. And he takes it in. That's rushing touchdown carries. He takes it in and ties, or at least gets the, the Abilene Cowboys back within one. Well, we've been watching him for a while, and we know what he's like. And when he hit a little bit of a seam right in that in that quick middle of the D, he was off on a sprint, and he was headed to the end zone. And once he gets in the open field, you don't catch the 6'4", 190-pound senior. He is an athlete to be reckoned with on, uh, on any sports field. So a very quick strike for the Cowboys to end the first quarter. Now to tie it, Abilene with the extra point. The kick is up, and it is through. We are tied at 7-7 into the opening quarter. Stay with us. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. 
I was straightening shelves in central office when in marched. G.I. Joe reporting for duty, sir. Excuse me? I'm here to represent your cleaning and break room products, sir. Oh, you mean our high-quality, genuine Joe products. Paper towels, trash bags, mops, plates, cups, and more, all at great savings. It's not G.I. Joe products? I'm afraid not. My mistake, sir. Have a good day, sir. For all your break room and cleaning supplies, come see us at Central Office in Clay Center. Shram Chrysler Dodge Jeep is a proud supporter of Tiger football. Get to Shram Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and test drive the 29-mile-per-gallon Ram truck and save during Ram Truck Month. Need an SUV? How about the 30-mile-per-gallon Jeep Grand Cherokee? For 47 years, Shram Chrysler Dodge Jeep has treated you like family because our family name is on the door. Shram Chrysler Dodge Jeep on West Anderson in Manhattan or online at shramcars.com. Go Tigers! You want positive shit? I'll give you this. You know Abilene's going to have big plays tonight. When it's big plays to tie the game, it helps a little bit anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a positive. And let's go back to the keys of the game. They're already playing it. On offense, we wanted to control the ball methodically, control it, move the chains. We did that. And I mean, we possession, all those things. Stay up some clock. On defense, as much as we hate to sell out on one guy, we made a key to stop Hazlitt, and with no time left on the clock at the end of the first quarter, who takes it all the way to the house? Abilene will kick it off. Tigers back to receive short kicks. They'll be taken around the 30-yard line, up back. Returns it across the 35. Out near the 40 goes the return. Tigers have a great field position to begin this second possession. That was Brady Milliken who yeah. got the up, the short up kick and returned it out to the 39. I'll tell you what, I got my hopes up there for a second. No doubt. Because on, that's almost like a pooch kick. I mean, it's a directional high short kick. And if you want to have good coverage on a pooch type kick, he was within one guy at breaking it. Tigers take over, tied at seven, just underway in the second period. Play center just marched it down the field, got a couple of big penalties against Abilene on that first possession. They gave them a 7 nothing lead, and Abilene got the big run from Harley Haslam to tie it up at 7-7. Cade Wallace under center. He will work right side and will keep it himself and know where to go for Cade Wallace. Now, Tyler Young still on the sideline. We have not seen him back in the offensive set for a while. He is right by the down marker. Appears to be okay, but we'll see how long it is before he comes back on the field. And I, I'm wondering if something happened to him on that on that early run where he took that late pitch and he, he picked up good yardage right. and got knocked out of bounds on the sideline over here. I'm not sure we saw him back in the game. Yeah, Maybe not. I kept looking for him, and now I know where he's at on the sideline, but he has not been back in the football game. Adam Ebert running a fullback behind Cade Wallace with Gabe Ware out tonight, not even dressed. Here's Wallace. He's going to keep it again. Now get some good yardage up the field. Going to be taken out to the 44-yard line. That's a gain of maybe seven. He had lost two in the first down carry. And now it's going to be third down. About four left to go for the Tigers. 11 minutes left to work in this first half of play. We're at a 7-7 tie. Third down four for the Tigers at their own 44-yard line. Well, after the loss on first down, that was a good game by Cade. It makes a makeable third down play here. Cade and the team looking to their right sideline, their right anyway, for the Tiger coaches to put the play in. Now they all look to their wristbands and now go set. Tight formation again. They've been that formation almost all night long. Pitch out right side. This is going to be Hunter Mullen. First down yardage and Moore. He almost broke it free. The Mole Dozer takes it to the Abilene Cowboys. 40. Eight-yard line, it's first and ten Tigers. And Hunter did a great job of reading his block that time. He hit he, he got out there quick. He got out there quick coming from the other wing, but he paused a moment, let a block take place, and it helped him pick up the first hit. And also didn't try to get too much out of that. He covered it up. He made sure and got forward, had the first down, didn't give anything silly up at that point because you move the chains, you're inside Abilene, into the field once again. Billiken wide left. In motion goes Griggs from left to right. Hand off underneath. This is Adam Ebert. The Adam bomb takes it across. The 40-yard line, that's a great gain on first yeah. down. Almost three, maybe four yards for Adam Ebert. Hey, what he is such a tough runner. And I, I say this every game, but he runs with such good balance. And that time, he had somebody bear-hugging him around the neck. And he just, because of that balance and that strength in his leg, 
he carried it. And falls forward for the yeah. extra yardage. Yeah, exactly. Second down, and we'll call it seven, a three-yard gain for Adam Ebert. And if Adam can ever get in the open field, mm-hmm. the man can fly on top of all we just talked about. Here's Wallace under center. And off left side, Ebert again. Buries his way down to the 40-yard line. Another good gain on second down. And now you're looking at third down and three, Chet. And in the position, you could even think about two downs to get this first if you want to. I think so. You know, because of the way some things have gone in this first half of play, I think that's a legitimate thought process as we move here. But, you know, if we can pick up four yards every time we run the ball, <laughs> it's a good game. We're going to move, move the chain. It is a really good game and a great game plan. 8.45 to work first half. Tied at seven here in Abilene. Tigers driving again. They're at the Cowboy 40-yard line. Third down, four yards to go. In motion, Griggs from left to right. Hand off underneath. This is Ebert. Short guardage play. Won't get much. Maybe a yard. It'll bring up fourth down and two. And so now that proposition I just brought up, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I saw Adam pop just over the line of scrimmage there, and I thought maybe he had a chance, and then he got rocked. He probably picked up one yard on that carry. I think we're looking at fourth and two, most likely. Tigers going quick. We'll see if they run it or if they don't. Eight ten to go, first half, tied at seven. Cade Wallace has the crew up at the line of scrimmage. Tight formation one more time. Wallace under center. Fourth down, a couple to go. He's going to run it. Hand off. No, he keeps it. Now pitches late to Mullen. He's hit the backfield. The Tigers will turn it over on down. Gutsy play by Cade Wallace. But on fourth down, he knew he was short. Gave it a shot. Tigers lose a couple of yards. And it'll be Abilene's football first and 10 starting from their own 44-yard line. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes a solid fourth, solid fourth down where you tried, we tried about three different things no in the middle of that play. It's not any worse than a punt. Right. You know, and uh, now it's just time for the defense to come back on. Not so much like the last series, but more like that first series. Contain yep. and don't let anything big happen. There's been one big play that was the Harley has with run. At the end of the first quarter, we're tied at 7, 7.53 to work, and now we've got a timeout taken by Clay Center. Tigers were late getting personnel on. Remember, they've got some injuries they're working around. So maybe that's part of it. And they just turned the ball over on down. 7.53 to work, first half. We're tied at 7 here in Abilene. Hey, I want to remind you that Cloud County Community College, if you're going anywhere, it starts at Cloud County. Get your start on a college degree at an affordable option close to home. Wild County Community College invites you to complete the online and free application for admission. Learn more today at cloud.edu. Tiger football here on a Friday night. Gorgeous conditions, Ted, and quite honestly, 7.53 to go first half. This is a really big series for the Tigers for this football game. Now, I'm not saying it, it, the game hinges on this, but if play center stops, and get the football back before half, this game could get really interesting. Oh, I agree completely. And, and I talk about momentum all the time because I, I think it's so important. And momentum is fragile right now. At this point in the game, 7.53 to go. We just gave it up on downs. They gave it up on downs earlier. Right. It's 7-7. We've each stopped the other team. We've each succeeded against the other team. You know, so it couldn't be... It couldn't be more fragile for somebody to just want to take control of that momentum. Harley Hazlitt, empty in the backfield. Has a runner in motion. He'll pitch off underneath, run to the right side. Stretched out. Now getting free to the right sideline. There's a penalty flag downfield. We'll see what that is about. Palin Brumfield makes the tackle way downfield against the Abilene Cowboys on the carry that time. Ryan Wilson, that was a motion from left to right, a pitch underneath. There's a penalty flag thrown, actually now thrown further back. We'll yeah. see what this ball is. It appears to be against the Cowboys. Well, I think it's a hold, and they will bring this back. Yeah. Lots of times on a, on a misdirection, big sweep like that, it's a block in the back, but I was pretty sure that was a hold, and that's what the preliminary signal was. Well, it was a good preliminary signal. It was even better when they threw the spot back yeah. further than it was initially. Yeah, because it is a spot foul, so... Yeah, it'll almost be a replay, if you will. Actually, from where that, that flag first landed, it was far enough upfield that uh, they just still had a nice game. But this is coming back. They're looking at 
they just ran a huge play. They moved the ball like, what, 60 yards on right. that run, and they're going to get a net two out of it. <laughs> it is still first down, but first and eight instead of first down and ten deep inside Tigers into the field. Here's Haslett running behind the blocker inside the middle. Now tries to cut outside, hit a couple of different oh, times. Wow. Great play with the Tigers interior that time. James Casper forced him toward the left side, and then the interior lineman and defensive end, Dylan Carlson, may have finished that off. It'll be second down and still long. Well, somebody made a stop low that I couldn't see from here, and Hunter Mullen hit him high at the end. James Casper right. forced him from one side of the ice. The moldozer got a pop in there. Yeah, I did. It'll be second down seven, a gain of maybe one on the play. The football rests at the Abilene Cowboys' own 45-yard line. As what stands alone in the backfield, he has receivers to both sides staggered to the left and right. One wing back left as well. Looks to the sideline, now puts their receiver in motion. He carries it himself up the middle. Tigers again do a really nice job to stand up the big quarterback. No whistle yet. Boy, that is crazy. We saw this no, last week, Chad. I know you weren't with us, uh, but you were listening in D.C. And I was. they just let the play linger and linger. And obviously that was about, I mean, it was done. Well, here's here's the only thing I'll say about all that is um, that was something that we were talked to a lot about this year, about a point of emphasis, you know, and so... For a couple of games, we saw a lot of plays stop almost too early. Yeah. And now they're maybe letting them go just a hair too late. But Anthony, Anthony, Anthony making a play, made a huge stop. On and his play. first start on defense at outside linebacker. 6.09 to work. It's Abilene taking the timeout now. Stay with us. We'll come back right after this. Marty here at Bud's Tire. Like the Tiger football team, we strive to be the best we can be. After 47 years of serving our community, we feel like we have a good handle on what the best application of tires would be for your vehicle. We also can handle all your mechanical needs. We have many tire brands with rebates from $50 to $140 back. Man, what a great deal. Stop in and see us at 410 Court or give us a call at 632-2135. Good luck to all the Tiger athletes, and go Tigers! 7-7 seven, seven tie here in Abilene. The Clay Center Tigers now see the Cowboys forced to a timeout yet. That's got to give you a little confidence if you're Clay Center's defense. Abilene's tried to just push it down your throat, and now they're forced to a timeout to try to converge or convert a three, third down to four. Well, it really has. And, you know, penalties have played a big part in this first half of play, yeah. all against Abilene so far. Two big ones on offense, two big ones on defense. Haslett with two backs beside him. Now he sends his fullback O'Neill out. Haslett back to pass. Stands in the pocket a lot of time. Fires across the middle. Has a receiver. That is Wilson. It's going to be a catch and a first down play for Abilene with 6 one to work here in the opening half. Wilson has been a favorite target for Haslett and the Cowboys all season long. Well, we seem to be um, afraid to give up the big play, and we kind of allow that in the middle. And that's what we gave up earlier. Um, we had a big pushing around, and we had three guys, but they were all seven yards away from right. him. And Haslett has the ability to throw between coverage there, and the receiver just went across the middle and camped out, and Haslett found him. 5.45 to work first half. Abilene with the football now and play centers into the field. Pitch out left side. And he almost got the tackle. Finally, Jace Casper trips up the ball carrier on the pitch. That's a gain running downhill almost to the Tiger 25-yard line. It will be marked on the 25, and it'll be second down and short. Well, Anakin almost made the tackle, but the other thing that he did successfully to help on that play is he rerouted the runner right. inside. And he slowed him down a step, and the Tiger, the Tiger helpers came along. And remember, Atkinson Inniking, only a sophomore, his first defensive start, but he's been impressive at the times he's been on the field this year. And uh, they said this week in practice looked really good. Here's Hazlitt, going to run it right up the middle. Now moves to the right side. It's going to be Atkinson Inniking again trying to make the tackle, but it's going to be a carry of a first down inside the 20. And down near the 16, maybe 15-yard line, first and 10 again for the Abilene Cowboy. Well, the other thing that we need to uh, need to remember is if we're trying to tackle Hazlitt, you don't want to tackle him up around the shoulder. Pad. You yeah. got to go low. Got to go real low on you and quick. Got to go low quick. So it'll be the Cowboys moving it inside of the 
Tigers 20 down inside the 15, I should say, the 14 yard line, first and 10. 429 to work, first half. Tigers and Cowboys tied at 7 apiece. Hazlitt working left side. Now gets through a hole. He's going to be knocked down and tackled by Lane Livey with the carry down to the five yard line. It'll be second down and short. Good open field tackle, though, by Magic Livey. The breakdown go low, just like you said, Jack. That's a hard tackle to make. Right. Lane, Lane made it look easy on this foot. Down to four minutes to work, first half. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Tigers went up 7 nothing. Harley Haslett had a big run to end the first quarter. Tigers were driving, went forward on fourth down at the 40-yard line of Abilene. Now here's Abilene. Driving back to the direction. Pitch out right side to O'Neill. Gets a good block. Dives toward the goal line. And we have a touchdown to the Abilene Cowboys. O'Neill goes in. The big pullback able to move it across. Senior, 180, a six-footer. And Parker O'Neill puts Abilene on top for the first time in this game. Now the extra point try coming for the Cowboys. I think we get so used to, to Hazlitt keeping the ball in at times like that that, you know, it was an easier play for them to just pitch. Brian Lacombe, the extra point up, and it is good. Just knocked through the left crossbar, the uh, crossbar. It is 14-7. It's Abilene now on top by a touchdown. Play Center Tiger football continues here on Keek GLY. Welcome to Subway. What can I make for you? I want to mix things up a bit. How about one of our delicious Reuben sandwiches? Loaded with your choice of tender corned beef or oven-roasted turkey breast. I like where you're going with this. They're fresh toasted with melty Swiss cheese and topped with sauerkraut and Thousand Island dressing. All on your choice of freshly baked bread. Sounds perfect. Coming right up. The Subway Reubens won't be here long, so try one today. Subway. Eat fresh. Limited time only at participating restaurants. A new Farmway Co-op diesel fueling site opened in Clay Center at 516 6th Street, bringing a convenient, safe, and familiar Farmway fueling experience to the entire community. The diesel fuel site is open 24-7 with a Farmway fuel card or any major credit card. Customers can also use a Farmway fuel card at Bud's Tire and Ray's Apple Market, both fuel partners with Farmway Co-op. Farmway invites fleets and consumers in the area to experience it today. Your partner in growth. Tigers fall behind by a touchdown. 341 to work. We're still in the first half. Abilene able to drive it downfield after the Tigers went for it on fourth at the Cowboys 40 yard line and turned it over on downs. The Cowboys then methodically able to march down the field. One big play by Harley Hazlitt. Two good drives by both teams. It's 14 7 Abilene lead. Here's a return to the middle. Hunter Mullen starts to the middle, now moves left out near the 35 yard line. Knocked down there. That's where the Tigers will take over with three. 25 left to work here in this first half. Good return by Hunter. I was concerned about that kick. They have a good kicker, and you never know what he's going to do. And I, I don't trust Abley. I, I mean, <laughs> that could have been an onside. But uh, it was kind of a knuckleballer coming through there. But it fortunately made a nice one-hop bounce to Hunter. He was able to put about a 20-yard return on that ball, getting it out to the 35-yard line. Still good field position for the Tigers. 325 to work, down by a touchdown. Nearing halftime. Cade Wallace under center. He has Milliken wide to the right side. In motion goes Mullen. Hand off underneath. This is going to be Adam Ebert. Short yardage play. Maybe gets one or two. It'll be second down and eight. Well, I'm going to say this. You know, the way that these plays get kind of extended and not a quick whistle by any means, right. almost a delayed whistle, the way Adam Ebert fights with that ball, <laughs> yeah. he, he could bust one where we think the play's good. And for those, I'll get back to that. In just a moment, let's go second down and nine after a one-yard game. Wallace, pitch out right side, Mullen. Looking for a block. Gets mm. caught just from behind. He will gain a couple. It'll be third down and long. And we've been watching on the sideline, Tyler Young, who went out middle first half, first quarter, I should say, has been sitting on the sideline for quite some time. And he's being talked to for a while, and we we don't know any more than that, but he's not been back in the game. Third down seven. Tigers with the football. Run build left, tight formation. Milliken right. Aid Wallace under center. He has Ebert behind it. Back to pass for the first time. Fires downfield. Ball is tipped up in the air and then falls incomplete. 
looking for Balin Blumfield. It was right near the first down marker. The Tigers will be forced to punt with 222 to work in the opening half of play. Well, Dylan Ford for Abilene had coverage on that play, and he broke on that ball. He was trying to break in front and make a pick, and uh, we still almost pulled off the completion to Balin. He read it pretty well, but it, you're right. It, it almost got in his hands. It almost tipped up to his yeah. hands, which could have been a really good thing for the Tigers. Instead, it'll be Connor Last back to punt from his own 25-yard line. Awaiting the snap, it's a good one. The kick is away, and it's a wow. bomb. It's going to be taken back to the 22-yard line. The return to the right side. Gets out around the corner. Baylor Brunfield, though, brings down the return man that time for the Abilene Cowboys. Brian Wilson to return. A bomb from Connor Last, and Baylor Brunfield gets to tackle a 41-yard punt. By the sophomore. And now he turned it over, and that was a pretty spiral on that on that punt from Connor Last. I tell you what, Balen Brunfield has a reach with those he arms, does. doesn't he? I thought the runner was getting past him, and all of a sudden that long arm of Balen Brunfield comes out. A like reach and a grip. Stuff. I mean, oh. it's not like he reaches them, but he gets them, too, when he gets his hands on the jersey, it seems like. 2-10 to work first half. Tigers trail 14-7 here at State rink Dabbley. Harley Aslett back to pass on first down. Stands, fires out in the middle as a receiver. Pass is going to be caught by Bender. Tackle made by Atkinson Inneking. They threw just in front of Peyton Lane. He slowed him down. Atkinson Inneking made the tackle. That's first and 10, though. It'll be Abilene to the Clay Center Tiger 47 yard line. And Abilene trying to attack here late in this first half. Yeah, they're going with a little bit more pace than they did earlier. Aslett from the gun. He drops again to pass. No pressure coming. Stands a long time in the pocket. Now fires down. He's looking toward the end zone. He overthrows his receiver. Lane Livey may have had the best chance to get to it. It'll be second down and long. Haslett threw that ball 55 yards in the air with a beautiful spiral, and he didn't really look like he tried that. Ball. Almost like he tried to take some off to get to his receiver, if you will. And I'm not making light of that throw. Uh-huh truly was the step and just kind of let it out there. What a pretty throw. Yeah. Not everybody can do that. No. Lane Livey was right on the play, though. The best chance to maybe get a hand on it. It's second down at 10. The two straight passing plays. Well, you have to be aware that Hazlitt can break that down and run it himself. That's right. And we need to put pressure on Hazlitt again back to pass. Now Brunfield trying to get to him. Forces him outside. Nearly Sacked him. Now the throw down field and the catch. No, incomplete. Third down and 10. Jeff Bailey and Clowney Brunsville almost had the sack, but he didn't force him to throw it. He had a receiver who just literally dropped the football down here. Yeah, and what a, what a throw has the still made, but what pressure from Bailey Brunsville. And, we, you know, right when we said we got to put some pressure on him, because the previous play, he just danced back there yeah. all he wanted. That time, Bailey Brunsville had the heat on him and he was the result of, I mean, he was the cause of that incompletion. Third down, 10. Tigers trail by a touchdown here, nearing halftime. And then it's 42 to work. It's Abilene at the Tiger 47 yard line. Third and 10. Big play for the Tiger defense. Haslett back to pass. Steps up, fires down. Bill has a receiver again. That is going to be Wilson one more time. First and 10 yards. Now he breaks away, gets near the 10. And Abilene with a minute 31 to work. We'll have first down and maybe goal, if not first and 10, just outside the 10-yard line. Tigers looked like they had pressure nearing Haslett again, yeah. and I won't say it was a hold, but that defender for the Tigers was obviously tripped up as he neared the line of scrimmage. Well, uh, and I don't disagree. Appling in a hurry up here. Haslett takes the pitch out, now steps the throw. Now it's right. A lot of time still. Fires back of the end zone. Ball incomplete. Second down and 10. Abilene at the Tiger 10-yard line, basically second down and goal, although they could reach, obviously, a first down before they reach. No, it is second down and goal right at the stair. Tell you what, Abilene's done quite a few straight pass plays here, and that's harder on those offensive line than right. the running plays. True. And they are dogs out there. And then they had to hurry up to the line of scrimmage because of the big completion. They are welcoming the breather that they get <laughs> with, this, with this incomplete pass. I mean, not a hint of win tonight. So, no. I mean, if you have a passing game, you, you got to love this type of ball, ball game night. Second down goal at the Tiger 10-yard line. Abilene leads 14-7. Aslett goes under center now. 
play center rushes up near the line of scrimmage and may have moved across the line. They did offside from the Tigers, but it'll be second and goal out to five. Interior got up there and just couldn't stop the momentum when Hazlitt went under center. You get keyed up. You want to make the stop, no matter how many drills you do about going the movement of the ball and not the sound, still it happens. 14-7 ball game. Abilene leads. Tigers went 7 nothing to start. Abilene scored two unanswered. And now I have a second and goal to five. Hazlitt pitch out right side. And a dive toward the goal line. Abilene looks like they're in. They are. And the Cowboys now score their third touchdown in the first half with a minute 12 to work. They lead 20-7 to with the extra point on coming. Well, it won't show up this way in the box score as three touchdowns in the second quarter, but it's the same as. Right. All their scores really came within one quarter because Hazlitt scored with no time left on the clock at the end of the first quarter. We held them scoreless, I would say, in the first quarter. They came back and scored three. But home with the extra point try. He's been perfect the first two. Hold is down. The kick is up, and it is through. 21-7. Tigers now trail by two scores. A minute 12 to work. First half. Stay with us. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. Winter will be here before you know it. Now is the perfect time to schedule a propane tank inspection and fill by the professionals at Propane Central. Whether you use propane at your home, farm, or business, you can be sure you are getting the best value with Propane Central. Call today or visit them online at propanecentral.com. Propane Central, need a innovator and friend. Crop Production Services take this opportunity to thank their customers for their continued support and for the confidence placed in them. They don't take this privilege for granted and will keep working as a team with the common purpose of providing best-in-class services to all their customers. Crop Production Services also recognize the unity of our high school and college teams, building stronger partnerships together. They all know that your support and trust is the foundation of their success. Thank you from Crop Production Services. 21-7, the Abilene Cowboys go a minute three and 63 yards on six plays to take a two-touchdown lead now as we near halftime, a minute 12 to work. Swift kick down the middle of the field. Tiger up back, Riley Griggs can run it with it. He starts off to the middle, now to the left. Now he's going to be taken down out near the 35-yard line, maybe the 37. I think the ball came out. Oh, he's called the officials calling him down. Ball did come loose, but after Griggs had hit the floor. So a minute four to work. First half, Tigers trailing 21-7. Cowboys have scored 21 unanswered here, Chad. Yeah, and and they they did so um, with a lot of confidence, with a lot of authority, and they they sped up their pace. They had a lot quicker pace to their offensive tempo than they did in that first possession. Tigers take over from their own 38-yard line. A minute four to work, down by two scores. Daring halftime, Cade Wallace under center. They're looking wide right. In motion goes Hunter Mullen. Underneath, Wallace keeps it. Nothing there. And now under a minute to go, Wallace is going to be tackled about a yard forward. It'll be second down and nine, maybe second and eight. So 48 seconds to work. Tigers can get a couple of plays off here if they want. Trailing 21 to 7. I think Kate got hit pretty yeah, hard. He doesn't look like he's too steady right now. He was going well, in the center. Yeah, he was. Second down, eight twenty-six to work. Wallace will hand it off to Ebert, and that'll be a gain of maybe two. That might finish this first half. Wallace slow to get up after he handed it off. We're down to twelve seconds to go. It'll be third and seven. That'll yeah, be the last thing again. Now we have a timeout, it looks like. But Abilene, Abilene wants a timeout. On third down and six yards to go with seven seconds to work. <laughs> so they'll make the Tigers snap it one more time. Yeah. Let's we'll see if the Tigers come up with something. We'll take a timeout here as well. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. Headphones, cell phones, portable drives, wireless keyboards, and more. Radio Shack offers awesome tech solutions for everyday use. From batteries and memory cards to auto connectors and cables, 
You'll find exactly what you're looking for, plus a wide variety of accessories to upgrade your digital equipment. Patterson Healthmark Pharmacy and Radio Shack, enabling everyone to find what they need to connect and power their lives. Downtown Clay Center. 7.2 7.2 seconds to work here in this first half. Coming up at halftime, the Clouds County Community College halftime show. We'll hear from Lady Tiger Tennis, who's at regionals this weekend, and also from a couple of replacement of Tigers at Coach Rice, as we do each week on halftime. So third down and seven. Cade Wallace fakes, now keeps it, moves forward, has the first down, a little bit more. Five seconds left. Tigers with 3.7 clock stops as the chains move. That play center may take a shot downfield. They move the football to Abilene's 46-yard line. Well, if nothing else, it's definitely an in-your-face for that. For that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And Abilene tried to force them into a, and we did something. And the Tigers then move it downfield. Now, the Tigers had called timeout. Abilene's halftime whistle blows, but play center had already called T.O. The sideline official had that called. So the so sideline line back on. I'm not agreeing with the sideline official, the umpire's trying to say it's quarter, and the sideline official's saying, no, it's not. I gave I gave him a timeout. Yeah, the Tigers' sideline official says, no, I was giving a timeout call. You guys didn't see me. And so while the clock went to zeros and the whistle sounded here at half, they're going to get one more play. That is the Tigers at Abilene's 46. And why not take a shot from right. this position? So there's a timeout on the field. I'll let you know once again that Cloud County... Community College, our halftime sponsor, and we'll remind you that Cloud County Community College wants place their Tigers to become Cloud County T-Birds. Visit them online at cloud.edu or schedule a campus visit to find out about all the opportunities waiting for you at Cloud County Community College. Go places, be a T-Bird. Tigers get one more shot before the half. Do the final play of this half, for sure. Unless there's a defense, <laughs> defense to Finley, correct. Wallace under center. Mullen in motion, left to right. They'll fake at the end. Now Wallace moves right. Now stands, fires downfield for Milliken. The ball tipped and incomplete. And that will end the first half of play. Tigers battling here in Abilene. They're down 21-7 as we head to halftime. You're listening to Clay Center Tiger Football on KCLY. Todd here at Walls True Value. I got to thinking, if you get an 11% rebate on everything you buy, maybe everything you buy is priced 11% too high to start with. Just saying. If you want fair prices with an easy driving distance of your home, shop at Walls True Value seven days a week for lumber, appliances, hardware, and lots of stuff you need. No silly sales gimmicks, just solid products from solid people 100% of the time at Walls True Value in beautiful downtown Clay Center. Yes, seven days a week for you. 2015 is a monumental year for the Citizens National Bank as it marks their 100th anniversary. Throughout the year, the Citizens National Bank will be celebrating a century of strength and stability with many events and surprises planned. Be sure to like their Facebook page so you can stay on top of all these exciting events. This is a significant milestone of providing personalized service and a century of success. The Citizens National Bank, member FDIC. Back on the Cloud County Community College halftime show and earlier this week on our locker room show, which you can see on KCLY's YouTube page, we caught up with Lady Tiger Tennis. First, we talked with the head coach of the NCKL champions, Jeff Edwards. This team has done some amazing stuff over the last few years. To get to the NCKL championship, was there a point you kind of thought as this team was working that they're going to turn a corner, they got a chance to really do something special? Yeah, I, w- I would say the, the progression has been evident for the last two years. I mean, we showed up at the NCKL two years ago. We scored three points. We won one match. Hannah Callen beat Concordia. We showed up last year, and we won 11 matches out of 20. Um, and we were in the mix. We were fourth place still. And then this year we, we scored uh, um, 40, yeah, 39 points. We won 16 out of 20 matches. And, uh, you know, and it's been evident. They've been working really hard for the last three years. So... League championships haven't been around this tennis court for quite some time. It's a special moment for you guys. Yeah, and and the NCKL is one of the top tennis leagues um, probably in the state when you think about Marysville and the tradition they have, the the tradition that uh, Concordia 
uh, I'm sorry, um, Chapman has built, um, the tradition that um, Abilene has. So coming in there, I mean, we, we see, out of all the girls playing, we'll see 10 of them that get to state and get ranked at regionals, which is huge. So for them to come out and, and uh, win 16 out of 20 against the top competition, it, it was quite impressive. You mentioned regionals coming up this weekend. Lindsburg, your old stomping grounds, Bethany College. What's this regional hold for you guys? Have you kind of looked ahead to what's coming at you? We've been looking all the way through, and, and um, the thing that we know going in is that we are battle-tested. We've got uh, our, our two singles, um, number one singles, number two singles, Chloe Galg and, and Hannah Callen, haven't lost yet this year. They're they're 42-0 combined, um, so that's got a farewell for us for regionals. And our doubles, um, their record, we've got an 11-4 and record, and we've got 11-7 and record, but... Um, the doubles are constantly playing against some of the best in the state. So we're battle test. We're ready to go. You know, you got to win your first match, and then you got to get win one of the next two, and you're on to state. So that's our goal. It has been a goal to get to state. I know for these girls for quite some time, and for you. Okay, Tiger trivia. I warned him. You said you've got a little idea what this is about. So which lady tiger for you has the toughest serve to return? Um, I would say it is probably Chloe Gaug, and she has figured that out about midway through the year. She started a little jump serve, and, and she started acing me, and when she does, she just kind of gives this little smirk, and I don't return it as well, the smirk that is, but, uh, but yeah, I, I like the way that she's changed her serve. You don't mind being aced by one of your own, at least most of the time. What's the last movie you watched? Um, my gosh, we've been so busy. Um... It's probably a kid movie. Um, Frozen. Uh, that that's been watched a few times at our house. But uh, what are the little the minions? I would say that's probably the one, the last one that we watched. All right, the minions. It is. Name your favorite pro tennis player in the era. Um, I like to watch. My gosh, this is putting me on the spot. Um, I liked Pete Sampras when he was going. That was growing up then, and and uh, of course Boris Beck. Becker at that point, um, but I do like um, Jokovic, I believe now. Um, he's fun to watch, real real energetic and diving on the court and getting, getting court rash and whatnot, so I do like that energy he brings. Bonus question, favorite major championship in tennis, Wimbledon, French Open, U.S. Open, what is it? Um... I would say Wimbledon. I just like what it brings. You know, the, it's it's everybody's in white and it's classy and it's on grass and it's it's just kind of fancy. Everybody's watching it, so I would say Wimbledon. You did a great job. You're so worried about this. No 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 problems at all. Hey, great luck at this weekend at regionals. Uh, let's get a bunch of state. Okay. Very good. We'll do. Thank you. Our thanks to Coach Jeff Edwards joining us on the uh, tennis court for that interview. Also, Hannah Callen, the lone senior on this year's team, a chance to hear her thoughts on Lady Tiger Tennis and that NCKL Championship. Hannah, let's talk about the term NCKL Champions. It's got to feel really good. Does it still feel a little strange to hear that? Yeah, um, mostly the whole day was a blur after everything happened. I mean, we came from three points my sophomore year, the girls' freshman year, to 39 in league champs. It's great. It's a great, great story to see what you guys have been able to do. What about the Abilene Invitational? And I'm going to ask you about this because you guys switched things up a little bit. Uh, for the first time, was it the first time this year you didn't play singles? Yeah, um, yeah. Chloe Gaug and I, number one, two, number one singles, we played number one doubles. That was interesting. <laughs> um, it was kind of to preserve our record to see if we could get a good seat at regionals. It gave us a better chance, and it gave our girls a chance to play more singles and get some experience with that. You guys go into regionals, you mentioned the seedings. Um, I asked Coach Edwards, I'll ask you, what do you guys have your eyes set on this weekend? Um, I think we have our eyes set on the, some of the top seeds if we can. We've got great records and just to get in there and win a couple matches and make it to state and then just dominate there. State championship, what it's all about. Okay, Tiger Trivia, you ready? Okay. They're all standing over there watching, or at least most of them. So who on this Tiger tennis team would you say is the, the biggest practical joker? Oh, goodness. They're all... <laughs> <laughs> it's a toss-up? I would probably say, like, Emma Gerton. She's always goofing around and saying weird things that we all just laugh at. <laughs> Great, great. Well, we're glad we, you all have fun and are loose anyway. Okay, if you could meet any actor or actress, who would it be and why? I think I would meet Melissa McCarthy because she's hilarious and I just want to talk to her all day long and just listen to all that she had to say. And just laugh all day, right? Yeah, she's, oh goodness. <laughs> she is a funny, funny lady. Okay, what is your favorite class in school? 
Ooh. My favorite class in school is probably English composition, one of my college classes. I love to write, and it kind of just makes me um, think about the world in a different way. Mr. Lane's my favorite teacher, so. Now, I have to ask, least favorite, then, is? <laughs> my least favorite is probably my, oh, culinary arts. We're not doing a whole lot of cooking, and so that's kind of bumming me out. <laughs> But it's an easy class, so. The Lady Tiger tennis team, y'all like to eat then pretty much, huh? Oh, yeah. We're always eating. Okay. On the plate next for you guys is to go into regionals mm -hmm. and get something good out of that thing and head on to state, okay? You can eat really well after the state championship. Oh, yeah. We plan to feast hard after we dominate. Really fun with the Lady Tiger tennis team watching on at that interview and uh, and seeing their thoughts about what they hope to do this weekend. They're regionals as we speak today and tomorrow at Lindsburg, Smoky Valley, hosting that 4A regional. Stay with us. We'll hear from a couple of your Clay Center Tiger football players coming up next on the Cloud County Community College Halftime Show. This is 100.9 FM, KCLY Clay Center. If your life is busy and fast-paced... The deli and bakery department at Ray's Apple Market was made for you. If you like delicious meals that are ready to take home to your family, then the deli and bakery were made for you. And if you like freshness and variety, the deli and bakery were especially made for you. They made it all for you, just the way you like it. From their signature Rock House salads to their homemade breads and their fruits and veggies in between. See what they have for you at Ray's Apple Market. This harvest, producers that planted one of the high-quality wheat varieties or a blend from oldie seed are recording significantly better yield results. Varieties like Hot Rod, WB4458, and WB Cedar are high-yielding wheat varieties that deliver exceptional yields and good test weights. If you want the highest quality seed, make it a point to plant an oldie seed wheat variety or blend this fall. Call oldie seed at 877-692-4555. Back on the Cloud County Community College Halftime Show, and we talk football now at halftime with Cade Wallace to start off with. We'll also hear from Brogan Kent and a little bit from Coach Todd Rice. Cade Murph Wallace. Now, I've explained it to you at times on the air, the nickname. I asked Cade to explain it to you where exactly Murph came from. Uh, it comes from Kent Murphy, who's a probably the best baseball coach I've ever seen. He's on YouTube. Uh, if you want to look him up, you should probably not have young children around, but he's a pretty good coach. Yeah, he's a funny, funny guy. He really is, and it's, it's pretty suiting for right now as the World Series gets started. Okay, quick question out of football. Royals, as we video, are getting prepared to play the Astros tonight. Who are you taking? Royals, definitely. Yo, Daniel Ventura. Who's your favorite Royal? Probably Eric Hosmer. I like his hair. I don't... I want to get a Hosmer Hawk, but Mom never lets me, so. Mm. Hold strong, Mom. Hold strong. All right. Uh, you guys sit at 3-2 and two right now as you go into a game against the Abilene Cowboys who are undefeated. The ground and air game has been really, really good this year for you guys, minus the swamp rain out that we had against Marysville. Is there a play in the first five games, either through the air or on the ground, that really stands out that you just, you, kind of your mind, you kind of play back over and over again? Uh, I really like the play against Rock Creek, the first offensive play we had when we ran 31 swap and I pitched it out to Ty and Ty was gone. It pretty much fired us up and we knew that after that play we pretty much knew we were going to win that game. So that was a true good. game changer at that time because you guys had seen Rock Creek drive down the field. It looked like they were going to go in, they fumble and then boom, you guys are up. Okay, Tiger trivia. You ready? Yeah. All right. If the Tigers were to try out for a Broadway play, who would have the lead role or who was the would get the best actor award of the Tigers. Oh, I'm going to give it to Jacob Blackburn. It's probably a good call. The guy likes to be on stage, yeah. doesn't he? Favorite kind of pizza? Hamburger. Any pizza that you will not eat? Supreme. Okay. Basic guy, then. What's your favorite sport outside of football, and who's your favorite athlete in that sport? You may have already answered this. I don't know. Yeah, my favorite sport outside of football is baseball. But, um... My favorite player in baseball is probably Derek Jeter, even though he retired. He's a good role model for anybody. Class dude, that's for sure. Much like the Murph here. 39-time All-Star. Greatest baseball player to ever play the game and, and coach. Hey, good luck on Friday. Okay? Thank you. Always fun to catch up with the uh, Tigers midweek. We also talked with one of the Tigers seniors on the offensive line, Brogan, the can't-miss kid. 
You're part of that IHOP crew up front. We've talked about uh, Jacob Blackburn explained to us exactly what that was all about on that offensive line. You've done a tremendous amount of work over the last few years to get prepared for this football season, but also prepared for a little bit more beyond that. I, I thought it'd be fitting to ask you to explain what your plans are following high school. They're pretty big. My plans following high school are to go to the Marine Corps and to join the Marine Security Force. When did that decision come to you? How tough a decision was it? And uh, when will things start to, uh, when we start to make that move? I guess start with when the decision came to you. It started over summer. I was already getting in shape and my friend Brian Lego invited me out to a monthly pulley function where they do the monthly testing on where everyone stands. And yeah, and I just loved it. And when will, uh, when will you go into your basic training? Do you know the details yet? I ship out June 6th. June 6th. Well, we're all very proud of you, and God bless American soldiers like Brogan Kent in the future for the Marines. Okay, Tiger Trivia, you ready for this? Actually, I'm going to ask you one, one thing before we go. This season's flown by really, really fast. You guys are in, in, in our week number six. District play begins next week. Has it been a, kind of a blur to see this senior season go the way it has? Uh, kind of. Some things you can slow down, but it depends. By slowing down, uh, putting more details into everything, and kind of taking it all in as best you can. It, it's tough to see how quickly this thing flies by. All right, Tiger trivia, foosball tournament, Clay Center Tigers. Who wins it? Um, I would say I don't you can know. pick yourself. It's okay. No, nah, I would say. I'll say Lane Libby. I have no idea. <laughs> Lane Libby, all right. What is your favorite class in school and why? Uh, government, just because I like the teacher, Miss Pullman. She's a really fun teacher. She g gets you to think in a different way. We all know Mrs. Pullman well enough to understand that. If you had the chance to meet up with anyone in the world, anyone, no, no, uh, no problem getting this to happen, who would that person be and why? I would get back with my good friend Alec McLean. Very good. Just to catch up. Yeah, he, he's like a brother to me. Excellent. Brogan, best of luck this week, and congratulations on the decisions ahead. Brogan, can't miss kid, part of the IHOP crew for the Tigers. And we also caught back up with Coach Todd Rice. Now, at pregame, you hear him talk football. We also do a little thing called Tiger Trivia that you've been hearing, and we do that with Coach Rice each week as well. Let's talk Tiger trivia now. You're getting used to this whole drill, right? If the Tiger coach is sat down for a game of cards, which Tiger coach has the best poker face? Best poker face? I think Coach Hayes. I mean, he, he just, you know, not that he's expressionless, but, you know, he, yeah, I'd, I'd put my money on Coach Hayes. I hadn't planned to ask this, but I guess I should. Who would be the easiest to read at the table? Easiest to read, I think Coach Lask maybe wears it on his sleeve. Do you play video games? Uh, I play NCAA football is about it, and it's been a while. So that would be your favorite video game, or you go back to, like, Pac-Man and Asteroids? If I had my choice, it would be Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl, now that. Give me, give me four plays, and let me try to stop Walter Payton and, and the guys. I mean, that was the game. You know, Brogan and Kate are still here, you know, watching the interview. They should... YouTube, Tecmo, <laughs> and see what old school video really is all about, shouldn't they? Okay. All right, last question. What position did you play in high school? Uh, middle linebacker and center and guard. And what position did you always wish you could have played in high school? Uh, just leave me at middle linebacker and let me roll. You were happy there. Yes. <laughs> like The defensive-minded Coach Todd Rice. Our thanks to all of the uh, Tiger tennis and Tiger football coaches and teams that uh, gave us a chance to talk with them earlier this week. We'll be back in a moment. Get you set for the second half. The Cloud County Community College halftime show will continue. An old battery can stop you cold. If you're not sure your battery has the power you need to get through another season, it's better to be safe than sorry. Stop in at Hanson Ford and get a Motorcraft-tested tough battery. Plus, get a $25 mail-in rebate with the purchase of a Motorcraft battery now through December 31st at Hanson Ford. Motorcraft batteries provide dependable power for today's high-technology vehicles across a wide range of conditions. See Hanson Ford of Clay Center. Ford. 
go further. Curtin Propane has provided quality service and employment opportunities for over 60 years. Curtin is always on the lookout for exceptional company and owner-operator drivers to join their team. If you're a top-notch driver, call Andy at 800-232-0170. Curtin transports liquid commodities throughout the 48 states with an emphasis in the Midwest. Curtin is committed to excellence, safety, and quality service. Join the Curtin team. Call 800-232-0170. Back on the Cloud County Community College halftime show. Cloud County wants Place Center Tigers to become Cloud County T Birds. Visit them online at cloud.edu or schedule a campus visit to find out about all the opportunities waiting for you at Cloud County Community College. Go places via T Bird. First half stats Chet uh, for the Tigers 38 yards from Murph Wallace on 10 carries. Adam Ebert, 7 carries, 19 yards. Hunter Mullen, 3 carries, 18 yards. Tyler Young had the one carry for 20. We haven't seen him since. And uh, we'll wait and see if he's able to play the second half. We don't know any details on that yet. Bradley Griggs had a couple of carries for 16 yards. Carly Hazlitt for Abilene. Six of nine passing. 106 yards his main target. Ryan Wilson. And then uh, rushing 12 carries. 113 first half yards. Of course, a bundle on those on the one carry that scored right as the buzzer sounded at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, Abilene um, really found a way to put together some positive offensive yards in that second quarter. We got most of our yards actually in the first quarter of play. Abilene hurt themselves a lot on penalties right. in that first quarter. Twice, two big ones on offense, two big ones on defense, and uh, the Tigers were able to take advantage of that and get a little bit of a, a momentum going. You know, the Tigers have to just come back out and, and take advantage of the fact that they won the toss. Right. They deferred, and this is an opportunity to do what they were doing well in that first half of play. You know, a score and a long drive to begin this third quarter and a one-score game, you know, midway through the third maybe, this should be really, really good for the Tigers. Now, if they can do that, we'll wait and see. But that's that's really what the, this presents themselves, an opportunity to make something happen. Yeah, and that last scoring play, or scoring drive by Abilene, I think four of the six plays were passing, and it was like a one-minute drive. Casey Pacer kickoff is a squib kick. Caleb Mendham's going to take it back to the 22-yard line. Right through the middle he goes, out to the 30, maybe the 31, where he's knocked down there. Wakeville Bombers, by the way, up big. 62-14 to 14 is the score of the Lakeside Downs. And uh, that is 62-14. That's the end of the first half of play. So they're up big. We also know that uh, Chapman was leading Marysville at halftime 7 nothing, And Wamigo or Concordia let Wamigo at halftime. That was a 7 nothing score as well. Right. Tigers take over here at their own 32-yard line. First down to begin the second half, trailing 21-7. to Tigers have Brady Milliken wide to the right side. Dalen Brunfield at tight end left. Then you have Adam Ebert behind Cade Wallace, and motion goes Hunter Mullen. They'll hand off underneath. The boy, nothing there. The defense for Abilene crushing through O'Neal, Parker O'Neal. No, that's correction. That was a initial hit that time coming up front. As Parker Pace had made the play for the Cowboys. Adam Ebert was lucky to hang on to that ball. Okay. Oh, I mean, the, the, the tackler hit him about as fast as he got that hand up. The loss of two, second down 12. Tigers look to the sideline, now look back to their wristbands and set to work. Again, Tyler Young unable to go. Gabe Ware was out before the game began. He was not even suited tonight. Working left side now, pitch out left to Riley Griggs. And he is hitting the backfield. He'll be dropped for a loss. And right now the Abilene Cowboys have come out with their ears pinned back, and uh, they have dropped play center for two straight plays behind the line of scrimmage. And i got to give Jason Cam a little bit of props out there. Anytime I can see somebody on defense on a corner, even when they're on the other team, he, he had a good block on him. He fought off that block and had a good tackle on Riley Griggs. He didn't let Riley turn that one. Now the Tigers face with third down 17. They're back up to their own 25-yard line. First possession, second half. Tigers down 21-7. Cade Wallace under center. In motion goes Mullen. Wallace, the fake underneath. It is Adam Ebert who keeps it or gets it from Wallace and gets across the, almost back to the line of scrimmage, but it's fourth down and long. Tigers only forced to punt. Yeah, not really the start we wanted of this third quarter of play. 
three downs and out, and we're sending on the punting unit, and uh, we're, we're not to where we started this possession, right. fourth and 11. So, Tiger defense is going to be asked to do something big right away. Connor last will punt. He'll stand at his own 20, correction, 17 yard line to receive the snap from Parker Folks. Fourth down 11 for the Tigers on their opening possession, second half. Snap is there. The kick is away. It is a wobbly kick that's going to be taken fair catch style at the 46-yard line for the Abilene Cowboys. Ryan Wilson on the return. So, Harley Haslin and those Cowboys come back offensively with places that are trailing by two scores. Yeah, in good field position. They're right almost to the 50-yard line, right at midfield. Actually, they moved them back to the 46-yard line. Um, Connor got a little air under that punt. Right. You know, so I think that was the main reason that the, the punt returner called an early fair catch. And it's probably a good thing for the Tigers because we didn't have great cover. 25-yard punt, but no return on the fair catch by Ryan Wilson. Now it's split out left for the Abilene Cowboys. Hazlitt under center. First and 10, pitch out left side, carrying out toward the middle. And pretty good effort by Adam Ebert, I tell you what, <laughs> Ebert had a blocker on him, and he still made a play, Chet Carlson. Uh-huh. They had him bomb big time right there to keep the ball carrier right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we got a Tiger down here. Salem Brumfield is slow to get up and trying to get to the sideline right now, and what a huge loss that would be for the Tiger defense. So I'm afraid it might be his ankle or something the way he's acting, so uh, the Tiger coaches are going to look at him for a minute, but what a defensive play. All started by, by Adam Ebert, and then Hunter Mullen, Anthony got in there, and one other player, but a uh, uh, great stop by the Tigers, less than a yard. Second down and nine, and again, they're tending to Balen Brumfield. While we have that injury timeout, we'll take a break here as well. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. Central Valley Ag suggests this year you rethink your post-harvest schedule. If this El Nino is as, is as strong as it is and sets in as deep as it does, we could be looking for a wet fall time frame. CVA agronomist Mike Zwingman says get on the list for fall fertilizer, soil samples, or weed control right away. It's really important for us to make sure that as you're harvesting, we get out and get those fields soil sampled almost as soon as you get out of the field with the combine. Get a hold of Central Valley Ag and make sure your fall field work gets done this fall. Twin Valley is proud to announce their free Twin Valley Wi-Fi. Baylor Brumfield was able to get off basically under his own power. A little assistance from Coach J.D. Lane. Abilene face with second down nine. Haslett back to pass. A lot of time. Now pressure comes. He fires downfield. It is up, and it is going to be tipped by Peyton Lane. Nearly picked off. He and uh, Adam Ebert both went for it off the tip. There was some pressure up the middle from Gavin Ware has let, let it go, and Peyton Lane read it nicely. At first, I thought he had all the time in the world again because he's back there dancing, and, and then he let the ball fly all the way downfield. Great coverage by both Peyton and Adam Eber. That ball tipped high in the air, and then they kind of knocked each other out going for it. Peyton Lane tipped it up, and then the Tigers both went after Ebert and Lane, and as they went forward, kind of collided with each other, but now the Cowboys face the third down and basically 10 still to go. They're at their own 46-yard line. Haslett from the gun, two backs with him. Haslett's going to run it up the middle. Now starts up to the right side. Now Dodgers by a tackler, two defenders on the play. Big-time tackle, Anthony Atkinson, Inneke on the play. And also underneath, Lane Libby, the safety coming up. On run support, it's fourth down and long. It's not many times you see Hazlitt get tackled facing the other direction. Agreed. He always is facing the direction he's headed. Not that time. Those two guys just crunched him. The gain of maybe two, three yards, fourth down, seven to go. And Abilene will line up to punt on fourth and long. The snap is there. The kick is away. It is a boomer, and it's going to be taken by quickly by an up back for the Tigers. It's a quick tackle, but a nice job by Elias Pfeiffer to come up with the catch and hang on to the football, save some yards for the Tigers right there. Elias, a little sophomore, yeah. and he ran on very he late. Did. He did. He, he barely got out there in time to catch that punt. Now he's walking off saying, I had that all the way. No, <laughs> there's never a doubt. Or maybe he's saying, glad that's over with. I'm not sure, but he did a great job for the Tigers. Oh, and what a stop for the Tiger defense. 
Absolutely right. Keeps this game within reach, 21-7, 820 to work here in the third quarter. Anthony Atkinson, Anakin, is playing a great game. He really is. He stepped in nicely at that outside linebacker. Here's handoff underneath. No room for Adam Ebert. It'll be second down and long. This is, there's, there's a flag on the play, and it looks to be against the Tigers, most likely. We'll see what the call is. Here. Probably a flag on the play. Go. So, Who are they talking to? They haven't really talked to either team. Talking to the Cowboys there. It's going to be against Clay Center, which we initially thought. And then there was a little conversation. So, penalty on Clay Center. Still haven't seen it called yet. They are going to take the penalty yardage, evidently. It'll be first and 15. It's basically the old clipping call. So, costly penalty for the Tigers. Tigers. More than first and 15. They'll take the yardage back to the Tigers' 12-yard line. Yeah. First and about 20 to go now. Very deep in their own territory here. Tigers have kept the formation very tight. Remember, started the game without Gabe Ware, not dressing tonight. Tyler Young got one carry of 20 yards. He's been out since that time. Balen Brunfield on the sideline right now. And Clay Center still hanging around here, down 21-7. to Wallace under center. In motion goes Griggs. They'll pitch it out left side to Riley Griggs. And nowhere to go for Griggs. He tries to turn back to the direction. He's going to lose yardage. And now second down and even longer. Just no room to that uh, left side of the field. And then you turn back and there's more orange uniforms coming at you. We didn't get very many good blocks out there. Right. Abilene had great pursuit. Riley wasn't able to turn the corner at all. So second down, 23 now for the Tigers at their own eight-yard line. Tigers faced with a long field in front of them. Big stop on the defense, but now faced with the offense with a long field. And they have struggled to move it here early second half. Down 21-7. to Gade Wallace. Pitch out right side. This is Hunter Mullen. Has a blocker, Riley Griggs. Now tries to get to the sideline. Turns it up the field. Will be knocked out of bounds up the field near the 20. Late flag coming in. This is a huge penalty that's going to go against the Abilene Cowboys. And for no reason, Abilene was the lead. They got a pin. They just gave the Tigers a big-time break. Well, it was second and 23. We probably picked up 15 yards right. on that run by Hunter, but that's going to be an automatic first down, personal foul out of there. So a late hit on the sideline right on Clay Center's side of the field. And that should move the chains for Clay Center and give them the first and 10. We'll see if the yardage is marked off, too. First down and 10, Ty. Sometimes you see that call on a late hit out of bounds on TV or something, and you think, well, there's no way he could have stopped because they were barely out of bounds. They were about six yards out of bounds on that one. And kind of like Hunter Mullen last week, who's run all week long, I found from Coach Rice, it wasn't that he wasn't carrying the guy out of bounds. It was he extended his arms at the end of the play. And kind of the same thing here. Tonight, Abilene has six penalties for 65 yards. That's the third personal foul they've had tonight? Yeah. So So the Tigers get a break. They're out at their own 36, first down and 10. Wallace under center. Mullen starts in motion. They work at left side, pitch out to Riley Griggs. Mullen out in front trying to get a block. Griggs trying to get to the sideline. Stretched out and will maybe get a couple of yards on the play. It'll be second down and long. Well, I'm pretty sure we're going to see Balen Brumfield back in the game. He's he's running a little bit here on the sideline, testing that ankle. He's ready to go. Yeah, he's been bouncing up and down, trying to see what he can do, and he's got his helmet back and headed up to tell the coaches, "I'm ready to go." Just told Coach Ben last, "Get me in when you're ready." It'll be second down and eight for the Tigers after a gain of two on that stretch play left for Riley Greer. 6.43 to work third quarter. Tigers trailing here 21-7. With the football at their own 38-yard line. Wallace, pitch out right side now. Cutting inside the green. And a good run for Hunter Mullen. That's first down yarding. Tigers near the midfield strike. Here's the mole to Ozer. And he made a great decision, Chet. Started outside. They contained but what he found was a seam in the middle. 
Well, he got about 12, 13 yards on that run. They're going to move the chains, but he did a great cut upfield. You know, a couple of years ago, he always tried to take that outside. He always tried to make that corner and take that outside. That time he did a great job cutting the back up. And Balin Brumfield is back in. At the tight end right, Brady Milliken, the wide receiver left. Cade Wallace goes under center with Adam Ebert behind him, Hunter Mullen to the right side. And I believe Caleb Mendham to the left, or is that Riley Griggs still in there? That is Mendham. It's going to be Cade Wallace sleeping up the middle. He's got some great yardage near the first down. That's a gain of nine on the play, and the Tigers left second down and short at the Adelaide Cowboy 42-yard line. Well, everybody on this side of the this side of the stadium was, was asking for a penalty on that one as well, but a uh, great run by Cade. He moved it up. It's going to be second and one, and I think it's a short run at that. Well, if it wasn't a face mask or horse collar, it was hands to the face. They just didn't call it. I had the binoculars on the play the whole time. But Cade Wallace, a great read, second down now and short. Wallace under center, hard count, almost got him to come across. Now he backs off the line of scrimmage. 5.45 to work third quarter. That line stayed, stayed solid. Now Wallace again works it. Handoff underneath, late handoff, and it will be ball. a ball on the ground. No signal yet. If the Tigers have it, it's first and ten, it appears to me, and it is a recovery for the Tigers. And first down and ten play center at the Abilene 40. 5.33 to work third quarter. Tiger, Tigers trying to get this back within a touchdown. It's kind of hard to tell what happened. I think, yeah. I think it was a ball. He was trying to pull it back out. Okay. So maybe the ball ended up in Adam Ebert's belly, and he did fall forward for the gain I tell you, of two. I tell you what, we had our back against the wall oh, man. a while ago. Now we're up to the 40-yard line. That's Abilene's 40. Right. First down and 10 for the Tigers. Did they take a Shot up top. They haven't thrown much this game. Here's Wallace, left side. Hand off. Ebert through the middle. Some room to run. The Adam Bomb takes it inside the 30-yard line. First down and 10 again, Tigers. They'll move the chain. Yeah, the line judge over here just, just turned and said, go, boys, go. Move those chains. And the Tigers with good pace right now to their offense. Their offensive line is ready to work every time. Not in a hurry. But to the line of scrimmage and ready to go when the play's called. Adam Ebert got the last five yards on his own. He got the first five yards from that offensive line. The IHOP crew pancaking people out front. Bigger guys again on the other side, and they just keep making plays. Here's Ebert again. Good push for the Tigers down to the 25-yard line. It'll be second down and five yards to go. The best defense we can play against Abilene is a sustained offensive drive. Down to 424 to go third quarter. Called second down six after a gain of four on that play. Tigers now have it to Abilene's 25-yard line. 21-7, Cowboys lead. They scored 21 unanswered from the second quarter to the halftime. Play center had a 7-0 lead to begin. Now the Tigers marching, trying to get it back within one score. Cade Wallace, and then starts in motion. Now Wallace pitch out right side to Hunter Mullen. Gets to the sideline right, throwing out of bounds near the 20. He'll gain two or three. It'll be third down and short. Third down, still two or three to go. Under four minutes to work in this four, in this third quarter. Well, he didn't give him the spot I thought he had, Chet. I thought he was close to the 20. I did, too. They mark him down at the 22, so it's third and four. But I like what you said a moment ago. I like the Tiger pace right now. They're asked to pull, pull off a little bit more on third down than they had been the last couple of, couple of moves to the change. But still, it's third and four. And the Tigers are moving the ball. Malin Brumfield split out wide left, and the defender on the quarterback was tight. And at the last second, looked and said, "Oh, I better get out of here." So <laughs> he is covered. He was uncovered for a moment. Tigers were not ready to run a play yet, but they haven't split the field very often. Wallace this time pitch out left. Mendham, Hunter Mullen in front. Caleb Mendham, did he get there? He will be another. Abilene saying the ball's on the ground. No call by the official. Looks like Mendham got up with the football. I mean, it looks like he's inside the 20. Now let's see where the mark goes down. First and 10 wow. Tigers. How about Caleb Mendham stepping up? We've called his name a few times yeah. this year, Chet. Great run, and he was he was following a great block there by Hunter Mullen. And as he went through there, he got just enough to move those chains. 
Ball to the Abilene 19-yard line, first and 10 Tigers. Jacob Blackburn, Dylan Carlson on that left side with the Tigers ran by on the pitch out to Caleb Mendham, who ends up with a run behind Hunter Mullen, is back out in front, first and 10 Tigers. Adam Ebert behind Cade Wallace. Right side, hand off to Ebert. Fighting for yardage, get two yards, maybe. It'll be second down and eight. They move it inside the 20-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, another thing that the Tigers have done a great job on tonight is hanging onto that ball because Abilene is trying to strip it. Yeah, you better play. believe it. Every play. Second down and eight, a two-yard gain, they say. It's marked at the 16-yard line, 17-yard line. Two-yard gain by Ebert. 2.28 to go, third quarter. Tigers down 21-7, but driving. Tight formation, Brumfield left. Nobody wide on right side, Milliken in their tight. Here's a keep by Cade Wallace. Now he breaks free. First down yardage to the five-yard line goes Kit Murphy. Cade Wallace, the 39-time All-Star, takes it down to the five. Cade Wallace got 10, 12 yards on that run because of his fake pitch. Uh-huh. And Abilene quarterbacks have been doing that for years, <laughs> very successfully here. And several of us know that. But great job by Cade, and he did. He sticks the ball out there, a fake pitch, keeps it, turns upfield. Great move of the chains. We're goal to go. First down and goal at the Abilene six-yard line. Tigers trail by two touchdowns, but driving. In motion goes Mendham. Here's a handoff to Ebert underneath. Now Wallace ends up keeping it. He may have gotten to the five. We'll call it second down and goal at the five-yard line again of one. And we've almost eaten up this third quarter of clock here. I tell you what, we've been running a tight formation almost every play, and that smash-mouth football is tight there. McCade Melius, Parker Folks, Ace Casper. To the left side, Jacob Blackburn, Dylan Carlson. That IHOP crew continues to march this team down the field, and those backs just fighting for extra yardage when they have the opportunity. Milliken is right, but again, a very tight formation. Brumfield left. Mendham and Mullen are the backs on the wings, but Mendham goes in motion. Now it's a pitch off to Hunter Mullen to the right side corner, and he's going to be tripped up near the five. They have got to the four. It'll be third down and goal. 52 seconds left, third quarter. Tigers trying to cut into this two-touchdown lead. It's 21-7. Clock ticking at 45. Third down and goal. It's at the four-yard line. That's one of those plays that's really exciting for a couple of seconds, and Abilene did a good job of closing the field down on Hunter. Cade Wallace looking to the sideline along with his team to the call. Down to 28 seconds to work in the first or the third period. Play center down, 21-7. Cade Wallace... Walks up toward his center, McCade Mellion. Third down and goal. Wallace, bend him in motion. Left side handoff, Adam Ebert to the goal line. Touchdown, Tigers. Is it in? Touchdown, yeah. Clay Center. The Adam Bob takes it in. Left side. And the Tigers have cut it down to a one. Touchdown lead. What a great run. What great blocking up there. They just went right up the gut. Adam Ebert takes it into the end zone. Both arms around that ball. He loses the ball at the goal line, but he had already crossed. You know, I mentioned that IHOP line quite a bit, the pancakes they've made. But yep. They've run to both sides. Yep. Case Casper, Parker, folks, right. The Kate Melius in the middle, and to the left side, Jacob Blackburn, Dillon Carlson. They can run either way right now. And they have to. Peyton Lane on for the extra point to cut this down to a seven-point ball game. It's 21-13. Snap is there. Hunter Mullen, the hold. The kick from Lane is up and through. And with 10 seconds to go, third quarter, the Tigers are within a score here in Abilene. Stay with us here listening to Play Center Tiger Football on PCLY. Twin Valley is proud to announce their free Twin Valley Wi-Fi zone. Available to all fans at Unruh Stadium. With Twin Valley Wi-Fi, you can share the moments from the game with all your friends and family. Listen to the game on the KCLY app. Post Instagram pics. Tweet updates of the game and update Facebook all for free without using your valuable cellular data. Enjoy the game and go Tigers from your friends at Twin Valley. 
What happened? This house is too small. So let's buy a new house. But we can't afford a new house. Money doesn't grow on trees. That's why we'll go to United Bank and Trust. I heard they have low mortgage rates that are affordable for everyone. Well, then let's go right now. Stop and see me, Maria Fitzemeyer, or me, Carla Sweet, at United Bank and Trust to talk about getting your new home loan process started. Or visit us online at ubankonline.com. United Bank and Trust, banking for your way of life. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Play Center Tigers are right back within a touchdown after a 77-yard drive. Eight minutes, ten seconds, they march off the clock in this third quarter. And now with 10.3 seconds to work, they will kick it away. Down just 21-14 to get state ranked and undefeated Abilene. Levi Fitzenmeyer on for the kickoff. The Tigers, a time-consuming 77-yard drive. Here's the kick from Levi Fitzenmeyer. It's going to be taken back at the 20-yard line. Return toward the right. Now the Tigers stretch this out pretty nicely. And they run back to the 32-yard line. Well, that, that kickoff took 10 seconds. That will <laughs> to the end of the third quarter. That will close down the third. It's a ball game here in Abilene. Coach Rice said, if we can get it to the fourth right. and make this a game, that's all we can ask for. Tiger fans, they've done that. Let's see what the last 12 minutes holds in store. Tigers trail 21. 14 here in Abilene. Stay with us. Tiger football continues on 100.9. I was going over paperwork in central office when in sauntered. The name's Bond. I'm needing to lay low. I thought maybe selling office supply products would be a good disguise. Well, we do offer great savings on items such as Laurel office furniture, desk, chairs, filing cabinets, and more, plus over 1,000 business source office supply items, house brands, but same great quality. Perfect. And what do you think about this big rubber nose and mustache? They'll never recognize you. Folks, for all your office furniture and supply needs, come see us at Central Office Service and Supply in Clay Center. Invest locally today for a better community tomorrow. Since 1911, Farmway, your local cooperative, continues to serve customers and its community with professional service and value-added products for all your agricultural and energy needs to plant the crop, take care of the crop, and store the grain after harvest. When looking for a resource or an extra hand for your farm, turn to Farmway, your cooperative. 77 yards, 8 minutes, 10 seconds off that third quarter clock, and Adam Ebert knocks it in with a 4-yard third down and goal touchdown run. The Tigers are down 21-7 to as we begin the fourth quarter. Abilene begins from their own 33-yard line. Hand off left side, O'Neal the fullback. Tigers stretch it left. O'Neal pushes forward to the 37-yard line. Pretty good gain on first down by the fullback. Abilene comes out with the quarterback under center, and they're in like a power formation back there with three backs, and they run it. You're thinking maybe they're setting something else up, but they did run it left side and try to play a little power football against the Tigers now. All right, after this play, i got a stat for you, Rock. We'll look for here it is, second down and five. As left side handoff. Chase Casper, good collision, but Abilene falls forward, may have picked up the first down. Abilene in the third quarter of play. Now we come out, we received the kickoff, and we didn't really have the first possession we wanted, but then we hold them. We hold them to three downs and a punt. Uh-huh. That was their only play in wow. the third quarter. 35 seconds of possession for Abilene in the third quarter. Wow, the Tigers ate the rest of the clock up. Now faced with third down and a short one. Abilene taking a lot of time. Are they on the measurement? And the officials coming to talk in the middle of the field. The run left side that time, coming from the tailback, Trey Bender was short. It was second and five. Now it's third down and a short one. A long time between plays. I'm not sure what the officials are talking about. I think the Abilene coach asked for a measurement or something. Yeah. Surprised it took them as long to decide to give them the measurement because it was pretty close. It yeah. appeared from, from our sideline where the stakes are set at. Just underway in the fourth quarter, Tigers trailing state ranked Abilene 21 14. They stretch the chains out. That appears they have the first down. And wow, that's why they wanted a measurement. No kid? No. So first down and 10 for Abilene. The football out for the 43 yard line. 
Tigers begin district play next week. Remember, at home, their final senior night is a week from tonight in the Tigers there. 11 minutes to go here. Hazlitt, handoff, left side. And a good carry again by O'Neill this time. They've gone to Bender and O'Neill, the first three carries of this possession to begin the third quarter. Just want to remind everybody, we're seeing a lot of on Hazlitt for several plays there. True. He's still on the field. We don't want to forget that. No, he's still playing. And he's under center, which is, is a bit unique for the Abilene Cowboys. He sends a receiver wide left. That is Wilson, his favorite target. Three bats, a power formation right now for the Abilene Cowboys. This entire possession, we've seen a formation they hadn't shown all game. And off left side, hit in the backfield by Jace Casper. Now Adam Ebert wraps up, and it's going to be a tackle near the line of scrimmage. Almost a tackle for loss. The freak, Casper got there first, and then Adam, the Adam Bomb Ebert got in there second, third down and five. He just was able to bounce outside of Jace after Jace put a pretty darn good hit on right. But he went right into Adam Ebert. Those aren't too good guys to get hit by if you're on offense. Third down and five. Football at the Abilene 48-yard line. Cowboys break huddle. Same formation, except Hazlitt goes from the gun, and he puts two receivers right and one left. Hazlitt will run it himself through the middle. Starts off to the right side. Now he's going to be picked up and tackled by Anthony Atkinson, anything in Lane Libby, but Hazlitt takes it into play center Tiger territory. It's down to the Tiger 42-yard line, first time in care. And I was basically waiting for that formation yeah. that play where he backs up for being under center. They kick off one of those backs up to not really a wing, more of a, like a flanker. And, yeah, he just he took the snap and waited to see where a hole may open into patience by Hazlitt, too, when he runs that. Same formation here as last time. First time the 10th, Tiger 42. Same run, but to the left side. Now tries to bounce it outside left. Gets to the sideline, still on his feet. Finally knocked out of bounds at the Tiger 30-yard line. That's another first and 10, it appears. And it will be first down and 10. Abilene will move the chains. They lead by a touchdown, 9-0-2 to work in this ball game. We've got runners on both sides, runners from both teams that have shown a lot of patience tonight waiting for their block. Yeah, and if we talked earlier about Tyler Young. We mentioned Gabe Ware was not dressed. Tyler is out of pads completely. He had a helmet on as we went into halftime, but he is on the sideline in jeans and out of pads. So just want to keep everybody up to date on that. Tigers playing a short-handed tonight, to say the least. Here's a carry right side by Haslett. He's hitting the backfield. Now he gets by the first tackler. Hunter Mullen finally brings him down. Peyton Lane got up there and had a hit on him. But Haslett able to fall forward for a gain of four, maybe five, but there is a penalty flag down, Jack. And I like where the flag is, and I like what indication it probably is a hold. If near the line of scrimmage, that'll back him up to like a first and 20 situation, if that is what we believe it is, and that is the ball. So it's a first down, but now it's backed out near the 40-yard line. Yeah, I think think the hold was even behind the line of scrimmage there as they were trying to kick it out around to the right. So the line of scrimmage becomes the 42. The first down marker is the 20. So first down and 22 to go. Absolutely. 8.53 to work. 21-14. Tigers down here in the fourth quarter. Seven penalties for 77 yards for Abilene. That may be our stat of the game. They've been important. Yeah. Haslip alone in the backfield. Wilson in motion. Hazlitt keeps it himself. Now he gets free for a moment through the middle of the field, and he may break it to the end zone. Now steps outside, almost tripped up. Chased down near the goal line. Hazlitt able to get in. And the Tigers had some looks and just couldn't finish off the run from Harley Hazlitt. He is that good, Chad. He really is. There were a couple of times I thought we had him inside, yeah. close to the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, lots of times when you talk about missed tackles or this or that, they're four tackles. He's just that good. Yeah, he, he's amazing. And he just started middle, went left, weaved his way to the right side of the field. The Tigers had some chances. They got hands on him just to not bring him down. Now they throw on for the extra point try. Tigers trails 27-14, still 8-24 to work in this ball game. The extra point try is on its way, and it's up and good. 28-14, Tigers trail by two scores. 8-24 to work, fourth quarter when we come back. Guys, Ravine and Home Improvement, we've got you covered. 
Did the recent storm cause damage to your roof? Call Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement in Concordia now to have a member of our team provide an estimate to restore your roof. Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement has been replacing and installing commercial and residential roofs for over 35 years. You can trust the Geisler team to get the job done right. When it's time to replace that car or truck you're driving, or if you are in the market for your first vehicle, come see us at Union State Bank. We take the time to help you determine the price range of a vehicle that works in your budget. We finance cars and trucks at very competitive rates and offer an extended warranty program to give you that peace of mind for those unexpected repairs. So before you make one of the largest purchases in your life, come see us at Union State Bank to get pre-approved for your next car or truck loan. Member FDIC. Back once again in Abilene, Bernie Pancella, our studio engineer, Dr. Stats, Gary Carlson with us, Chet Carlson as well, Rocky Downing on a football Friday. And it's been a good one here, Chet. Harley has let's made two electrifying runs. That's really the difference in this ball game. Yeah, really Oh, absolutely. Here's the kick from Abilene, taken by Hunter Mullen, and he's on an 18-yard line. Now steps out to the outside left, shakes off a tackle across the 35, near the 38-yard line. The Tigers will take over the football. Aslett, 18 carries, 191 yards in this game thus far. The Tigers down by two scores, still very much a part of this football game. Absolutely. If we if we can just come back out on offense like we finished on offense with that confidence and that control and that tempo, good things can happen. Tigers have Brandon Loader now in on the offensive line on that right side trying to give some of the guys, a little break. Jace Casper stands off on the sideline left, getting a break and plays both ways, of course, as many of the Tigers, many of the Tigers do. So first and ten, Clay Center. They start from their own 37-yard line. Wallace, right side option, pitches out to Caleb Mendham, and we have a procedure call before the snap against Clay Center. 8-14 to work in the ball game. Tigers trailing here, 28-14. Well, so far, I mean, penalties are relevant in this game. So far, most of the Tiger penalties have been more along this nature. A couple right. of procedure calls. Um, Abilene has seven penalties for 77 yards, and they have missed something in this game, which may be in line for that stat of the game. We'll be talking about some of those here in just a moment. Three for 21. First, or first down 15 after the penalty yardage. Here's Wallace, makes the pitch, rolls right, wanting to pass, dumps it off right to Adam Ebert. Pass is caught, gets the block from Brumfield, gets the penalty yardage back, and some more after the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. A good play with the Tigers on that little naked bootleg, and Cade Wallace able to float it out there. He made a great pass last week, and Ebert made one heck of a catch for big-time yardage. Pretty good play here as well. Well, Cade had to get creative. He had to get that ball over people that were putting pressure on him, he kind of had to float it out there, as you say. First of all, Adam made a great catch, then he made a good run after the catch, just hard spot yards. Second down seven for the Tigers from their own 40-yard line. The motion goes Riley Griggs. They will work it underneath. Wallace keeps it. He's got some room to run. Gets downfield. And the midfield drives across the midfield line. Goes Murph Wallace. First and ten Tigers. They take it to the Abilene 47-yard line. Pretty close to 14, 15 yards on the run there by Cade Wallace. And, you know, that's after we start out with an illegal procedure play. We picked right. up seven or eight on that pass play to Ebert and then a big run by Cade. Haven't thrown it much tonight. Just a couple of looks in the passing game for the Tigers. Here's Wallace first to kick. In motion goes Mullen. They'll keep it. Now it's handed off underneath to Adam Ebert. Good run wow. downfield. He takes it to the 35. Cade Wallace got tackled. I was watching him get tackled because I thought he still had the football. Great move by Murph. Great run by the Adam Ball. I was with you. I was watching Cade get pounded. <laughs> and then I watched Cade look upfield to see, if, uh, you know, Ebert picking up the first down. Behind the line that that time included Brogan, the can't-miss kid who was out there. Just saw him come off to the sideline as the Tigers marching downfield. 6.52 to work. They're now at the Abilene 35. Ball is talking to Ebert behind him. Now works his way back up near the line of scrimmage. In motion, Mullen. Right side work. Wallace keeps it. He's going to be caught right at the line of scrimmage. He was one guy. If he gets by the, the initial hit on him, he had some room to run, but there wasn't much room when he was gathered up. 
Tigers have another good drive going here, another good possession. They're moving the chains. They're picking up first downs, you know, on first, second down, not even really getting the third down very often. But uh, six minutes to go in the game, down by two schools. Second down, 10, no gain on that play. Down 28-14. Wallace left side. Pitch out. This is going to be Riley Griggs trying to turn the corner outside. He's caught in the backfield and dropped for a loss of yardage. That will bring up a third down and long. Remember, playing without Gabe Ware from the start of this ball game tonight. And then Tyler Young went down after his first carry. And unfortunate, unfortunate to see 15 and 28 standing in jeans right now on the sidelines yet. No kidding. And 44, who we haven't had all years. Right. Now, Zeb Bloom, Evan Stanley, of course, unable to play. Here's Cade Wallace, right side, takes the pitch, nowhere to go. He really had no chance to do much of anything. Now the Tigers face the fourth and long with 524 to work at the Abilene 35-yard line. Yeah, we won't be sending in the front team here. Right. We'll, we've got to make something happen. We need, to, we need to find a way to get 11 yards on this fourth down. 512 to work in this ball game. Tigers down by two scores. 508 to work. Fourth down and 10 at the Abilene 35-yard line. Tigers with the football. Cade Wallace. Bowling goes in motion left to right. Back to pass. Wallace looking downfield. Fires. He's looking for Milliken. Overthrows two defenders in the area. And that will turn the ball over on downs. It was not open. Wallace trying to get down the scene to Brady Milliken. Under five to work. The Tigers turned it over on downs. Yeah, the Tigers Tigers were moving the ball well on this possession. And, and they had some momentum going there. All of a sudden, you kind of stall on about three downs, four downs. And all of a sudden, you don't have the ball running up. And you got to do something you don't want to do, you know, in, in their offense right now as well. 28-14, Tigers down as we just go under five minutes to work, and Abilene takes over their own 35-yard line. One thing we have not seen in this ball game: a turnover. Hmm. Just thought I'd bring that up. <laughs> Harley Hazlitt stays in the shotgun. <laughs> and we'll hand off underneath, carry through the middle. Short yardage play, although it's a gain of maybe three or four. Does move across the 35 yard line. The clock continues to tick down to 440 left of this ball game. I like the way you did that because there's no superstition <laughs> there. Yeah. Never. Never has been, never will be. Two. Second down seven after a three yard gain. Although, if there was a turnover, this would be a great time for one, I'm just saying. Well, I guess, well. I guess if you're going to bring it up. <laughs> Come to think of it, Cowboys take a little time to move to the line of scrimmage. A little time. I've never seen them move so yeah, I agree. And look from the gun, handoff underneath one more time. Hitting the backfield, now working to the right side. Tackles made by Parker Folks. Also on the play was Peyton Lane and Anthony Atkinson indicated. 405 to work. Football moved out across the 40 yard line. It'll be third down and short. It's March at the Abilene 42. Now under four to work in this game, the Tigers down 28-14. Tabling's trying to eat up the clock. Right. They're, they're using every second of the play that they can. They're running, grinded out, run plays. And that time, if you notice, the Abilene runner made sure he did not go out of bounds. True. Turned up upfield, short of the out-of-bounds mark, and just wrapped both arms around that football. For Steve Simpson, now in his second year at Abilene after several years of lead. Here's Hazlitt's going to keep it himself working left side. Hit by Brumfield. And now wrapped up and brought down by the Tigers, but it appears he'll move out to the 45-yard line. I think they're giving the the spot right on the 45, like you say. That should move the chains to them. Coach Rice may have asked for a measurement as soon as that play ended. He's looking to the sideline. Coach Rice measuring it with the officials, and they've already marked first down on the down marker. And they may bring the chains out here to see where it's at. Timeout, it looks like, on the field. 319 to work. Tigers trailing here, 28-14. Stay with us. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. Ray's Apple Market is glad to provide customers with quality choices to feed your family while saving you money. From peanut butter to box dinners, snack items, canned goods, and more, the variety of the wow bins at Ray's Apple Market is always changing and offers you more savings. You'll find the wow bins throughout the store that features your favorite brands, private labels, and new food items to try. 
Shop every week to find great values and stock up on pantry items your family enjoys. This is 100.9 FM, KCLY Clay Center. Well, they have changed it from a first down to a third down, and now they will move the chains out and measure. I kept wondering why they were not going to measure when they decided it was third down. I think maybe it was the lobbying of Coach Todd Rice that finally said, look, they got a measurement earlier, and it was first down. Give me a measurement now. Let's see where we're at here. And he may have wished he hadn't called for it because it is first and ten. So all that said... I think initially, as we talked when we went to break, Chet, the Tiger sideline just didn't like the spot to begin No, they didn't like the spot at all. And the officials at one time were trying to just call it first right. round out in the middle of the field. So I'm not sure what all the, the dialogue was out there, but it's the first down forever. Coach Rice still talking to the sideline official and explaining he does not like the, the spot. Now with a smile on his face. A sarcastic smile, I might add. Yeah. He does come to the sideline and send his team back out. 319 to work. Tigers down 28 14. They have battled so great here tonight against the Evelyn Cowboys. Here's Haslett under center. He will hand off underneath and stood up and wrapped up and driven down. That is a tackle made by Garrett Craig yeah. inside. What a great tackle by the soft. 28 14. That'll. <laughs> Put it to a second down and 10, no gain on the play. The handoff was underneath that time to Colton Leiby. And now a timeout on the field. We'll break here as well. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. Wherever the road leads this season, you have to depend on quality tires to get you there safely. Hanson Ford has a huge selection of tires for sale, big brands, and great prices. Now through December 31st, when you buy four select tires at Hanson Ford, you can get a $70 mail-in rebate. For the upcoming season, with wet and icy road conditions, you'll feel confident knowing you're riding on tires that perform their best when you need them most. Visit Hanson Ford in Clay Center today. Back once again here in Abilene. Shed a couple of awards we're going to give away early in this one as we near the end of this football game. Let's start with the Midwest product stat of the game. And we're going to talk penalties in this football game. There were seven penalties against the Cowboys, and all of them were fairly costly tonight, including three personal fouls. Yeah, there were three personal fouls that cost them dearly, and they had seven total penalties for 77 yards. Play center did pretty well so far. Three penalties for 21 yards, two of the of the five-yard variety. Seven penalties for the Abilene Cowboys, a Midwest product stat of the game. 313 to work, Abilene with the football, second down and 10. Here is a little counterplay to Ryan Wilson. Gets a fly, now it's caught from behind. Great tackle by Lane Livey, and there's a penalty fly before the tackle, which appeared to be a hold, I think, on Livey before he hit the tackle. Yeah, act. he was held, but he still made the tackle. Yeah, absolutely right. And add to that to the Midwest product set of the game. One more, Abilene Cowboys. Well, right. that might that might be our catch of the game. <laughs> Lane Livey. That's true. That's true. Caught him even after being held. We also have the uh, block of the game. We wanted to give away the uh, uh, can equip block of the game. That was down early in this football game. I just thought it was, it was spitting because we talked about this offensive line, and tonight I think they have played a tremendous football game. They really have. And early on, McCade Melius, Parker folks, Jace Casper opened up a hole for Jace Casper to take our first score in. That's for that. Yeah, Cade Wallace got in on that, and he was very patient. He got behind those three guys and just picked his space to cross that goal line. And, you know, that all happened. We went up seven. or You know, it was seven there, and it was just a great, great block. Here's Haslett underneath, hit by Parker Folks, gets out, gets the penalty yardage almost fast, but it's going to be third down and long with 238 now to work. And a timeout again taken on the field by the Tigers. So your can equip block of the game again, that interior, and then to the right side. That whole line's done a great job. But on the play, the Cade Wallace went in, but Cade Melius to the right was, again, Jace Casper and Parker Folks. 2.38 to work, timeout on the field. Stay with us. You're listening to Clay Center Tiger Football on 100.9. Marty here at Bud's Tire. Like the Tiger football team, we strive to be the best we can be. After 47 years of serving our community, we feel like we have a good handle on what the best application of tires would be for your vehicle. We also can handle all your mechanical needs. We have many tire brands with rebates from $50 to $140 back. Man, what a great deal. 
Stop in and see us at 410 Court or give us a call at 632-2135. Good luck to all the Tiger athletes, and go Tigers! Scored up, 8 you on. The Wakefield Bombers ended their game at halftime, so homecoming dance starts early tonight and for the Bombers at the hangar. They uh, win big tonight. Wakefield with the win in that ball game, 68-20, to 20, was the final. Here, the Clay Center Tigers down 28-14 with time getting down to that 238 mark right now. It will be Abilene Haslett back to pass on third and long. Down the right side has a receiver. Pass is going to be caught. Peyton Lane will make the tackle, but the pass complete to the tight end downfield for the Abilene Cowboys. Ben Beach catches it inside the 20. So the Cowboys move it downfield and have a first down and 10. 2.30 left to work. 28-14 ball game. Tigers trailing here and Abilene now can really sit on this football with uh, the two-touchdown lead, and the Tigers are they down to no timeout remaining? I know they've taken at least a couple here in the closing minutes to try to get an opportunity for a possession back. I got an electrifying play of the game, Rock. Talk to me. Hunter Mullen. Okay. We're, we're against our goal line back there. Second and 23. I like a it. big 16-yard run by Hunter Mullen finished out of bounds with a personal foul penalty that just kept everything going, or actually started. Great, it. great call. That uh, really started is. a scoring drive. The, the Debenham electric, electrifying play of the game, it really gave us a chance for the Tigers to get back in this football game. And we were down 21-7 to begin the second half. The first drive was nothing. Then we stop Abilene. We're pinned deep. That's where Chet's talking about when Mullen made that run. Not only a big-time run, but then the penalty on top of it. So, yeah, it's a good call. Debenham Electric, electrifying play of the game. The Moldos are getting outside, and then the penalty on top of that for the Tigers. 2.03 left to work here. Play center down 28-14. So, barring something really crazy happening, Tigers probably going to drop to 3-3. Three and three. Abilene goes to 6-0. and oh. What play center's got to take something out of this ball game feeling really good? the way they played tonight. Well, I think so. You know, sometimes after, it, it takes a while. It's not gonna, <laughs> yeah. They're not going to feel it immediately on a game like this. Hand off underneath, and tackle's going to be made by Adam Ebert. First contact, anyway, down inside the 10-yard line it goes. Second down, and about five to go under two minutes to work in the ball game. Tell you what, there's a lot of people from Clay Center that figured Clay Center had no chance coming into this game. State ranks, Abilene. Abilene has really been really been playing well and they have a great team. Obviously they have a great team but I guarantee you all of those Tigers down there in white jersey came in here with a different attitude. They showed well and, and on top of that district play begins a week from tonight. Right. And that's when things really get serious. The NCKL title is important. The postseason is what everything's about. We all know that. Boy to play without Gabe Ware all night. Tyler Young Bowes for the night. Basically and to do what they've done, right? Impressive performance, really, for play center. And the last time we were here, we played yeah. without a couple of starters yeah. all night. After, you know, after the first few plays of the game, like an only some might remember Cody Gregory going down at quarterback yeah. early in that ball game here on a Friday night. Harley Hasley goes under center. Ian Roman did a really nice job stepping in for him that evening. By the way, now it's Abilene going to get in. This is O'Neill. Parker O'Neill does take it in left side. It's a minute six to go, and they will now go up by three scores and will come on for the extra point try. So the scoreboard may look a little more lopsided than the yeah. game really was. We know that. But this has been a good performance for the Tigers. Yeah, some people call that style points. It's really not the, the football game everybody got to, to witness here. It right. was a great, great, classic, Abilene, Clay Center matchup. Hard fought. We jump up seven to nothing. Yeah. And then hang in there yeah. at halftime. And then come back and cut it to a touchdown lead. And, and then Abilene finally able to close this thing out. Here's the extra point try on its way. And it is up. And it is through. We're headed to the final minute six. Tigers now trailing here 35 14 when we come back to Abilene. Todd from Walls True Value here, and I want to share a comment from a customer. 
This customer told me, I don't know what I would do without your store. You really make my life easier. Well, that type of praise is great, but it also makes us aware that we need to live up to a pretty high standard. We hope that you will experience exceptional service and value when shopping for paint, lumber, hardware, and appliances with us. Come see us at Walls Tree Value in beautiful downtown Clay Center, open seven days a week for you. Whether you want the tried and true seedweed varieties or a blend of the latest in the field of genetic innovations suited for your specific soil conditions, Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales wants to be your source for seedweed and starter fertilizer. Let us explain all the details and then place your order to ensure we have enough on hand. We can also add treatment to your seed wheat to protect it while it gets established and ready for a harsh winter. This is Blaze. Stop in and see us at Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales. 35-14, Abilene now leads by 21, a minute six to work, and Chet and I were just talking. There may be a big catch play here before long. There was a really nice play for the second week in a row. Cade Wallace hitting Adam Ebert, a little naked bootleg. He had to throw it up over a defender, find a way to get it near him, and then make the play, and Adam Ebert made that catch of the game. It was a tough play. It really was. You know, you can have a game where we could have 20 catches, and some of them are pretty long. That was a tremendous catch. Here's the kick that's going to be taken at the 22-yard line to return toward the middle now left, and tackle's going to be made at the 33-yard line. The return that time by the play center Tigers, Caleb Mindham, I believe, on the carry back. So the catalyst signing graphics catch of the game, Adam Ebert with the catch that was made after the pass by Cade Wallace. Really nice play out in the open field to come up with it and find a way to get downfield away. So the Catalyst signing graphics pass the game to Adam Ebert tonight. Tell you what, a lot of sophomores for Clay Center are getting considerable action tonight. I've seen a lot of nice moments out of Caleb Mendham tonight. And really, we've seen him on defense some this year in special teams, but on the offensive side to play at that wingback spot, he's been in there quite a bit this evening. Minute one left to go. Wallace is going to drop back to pass, rolls left, fire sideline, but has Bale and Brumfield hit immediately. Still a gain of five, maybe six yards by Caleb Brumfield. So an opportunity to work a little bit on your fast tempo offense to end this ball game. It could more good things down the stretch in district play. I just love seeing Balin back in the game after an injury timeout. Exactly. Here's Wallace again back to pass. Rolls right. Ball fakes. Jumps off his back foot. Looks for Brumfield. Tithing attempt by Balin on the sideline. It falls incomplete with 32 to work there. Tigers will be at home for the final time in the regular season a week from tonight. They host Goodland Senior Night at the end next week. Worth your time to come support this team. They are, they've done some great things Oh, absolutely. Year. Well, next Friday's going to be a big night all the way around. You know, besides that, but like you say, we're starting district play, Senior Night. It's going to be CCFA recognition. There you go. Yeah, another reason to be at at the end. Dave Wallace steps in under center. Option, pitches out left side to Riley Griggs, bounces off a tackle. Near the first down marker appears to move the chain. Clock will continue to move. Now they'll stop it to move the uh, first. No, it's going to be fourth down, it looks like. Nope, first and ten. Now they'll move the chains with 22 seconds to work. The Tigers are going to have a chance to run at least one more play. Down 35 to 14. As close as anybody in the league has played, the Cowboys this year, though, mm-hmm. from start to finish. Wallace back to pass, firing long downfield, and it will be just overthrown with 10 seconds left. They'll get another shot. He was looking for Balen Bumfield. That came closer than I, I know. Than I thought it was going to be. And with Balen blowing arms at the last second there. And speed that I don't think a lot of people realize Balen possesses. He's fast yeah. down the field. Even, so after, down it. even after leaving the game with an ankle <laughs> injury. Yeah, really. Second down, 10. Tigers will get an opportunity to, said last time, maybe two plays. They may get a couple more off before it's said and done. But Millick and wide right, run field left. Bowling goes in motion. Back to pass, Cade Wallace. Pressure coming. Fires across the middle, has Millick and catches made at the Abilene 40 yard line. First down and 10. And Milliken, that's only his second catch of the year. Chet, one was for a 35-yard touchdown. 
this one for what, 20 yards and a first down, right? That is really nice. And both of his catches were across the middle. Yeah. Well, the one was kind of a skinny post up top. But there he was coming across the middle. And got a little timeout by the Tigers here with three seconds to go. 3.7 to work, 35-14. Timeout on the field. 23-yard pass play, pass play from Cade Wallace to Brady Milliken. We're back after this. Winter will be here before you know it. Now is the perfect time to schedule a propane tank inspection and fill by the professionals at Propane Central. Whether you use propane at your home, farm, or business, you can be sure you are getting the best value with Propane Central. Call today or visit them online at propanecentral.com. Three point seven to work, thirty five fourteen. Abilene's going to get the win. Tigers would love to punch one more in, though, just to finish what has been a really, really good game on an even more positive note here. If they could find a way, Cade Wallace back to pass, has some time. Now rushed out to the right side. Now starts to plant and throw, and his feet just went out from underneath of him. And you hope it was only a slip of the feet. He's a little slow to get up. It was an awkward fall. And you hope he didn't twist something as he went down. Tigers will fall here 35-14. What a great, great effort for Clay Center on the road against the undefeated and state ranked Abilene Cowboys, the final 35-14. to Stay with us. Post game's coming up next. If you took a lot of pictures over the summer, print them off. Make copies for family and friends or enlarge your favorites. It's fast and easy with the photo stations at Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy and Radio Shack. You can print from your phone, Facebook, camera memory cards, and USB thumb drives. The helpful staff at Patterson's will be glad to help get you started. Save and share those precious memories. Use the picture stations at Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy and Radio Shack, downtown Clay Center. What happened? This house is too small. So let's buy a new house. But we can't afford a new house. Money doesn't grow on trees. That's why we'll go to United Bank and Trust. I heard they have low mortgage rates that are affordable for everyone. Well, then let's go right now. Stop and see me, Maria Fitzemeyer, or me, Carla Sweet, at United Bank and Trust to talk about getting your new home loan process started. Or visit us online at ubankonline.com. United Bank and Trust, banking for your way of life. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Twin Valley is proud to announce their free Twin Valley Wi-Fi Zone. Available to all fans at Unruh Stadium. With Twin Valley Wi-Fi, you can share the moments from the game with all your friends and family. Listen to the game on the KCLY app, post Instagram pics, tweet updates of the game, and update Facebook all for free without using your valuable cellular data. Enjoy the game and go Tigers from your friends at Twin Valley. Crop Production Services offers the best quality corn and soybean seed lineup that truly fit your acres and the way you farm. Year after year, top performing brands such as Asgro, DeKalb, Dynagro, and Mycogen turn top yields in field trials. Get expert agronomic advice, responsive service, and consistent fair pricing from Crop Production Services. Early cash and volume discounts and financing options available. Visit with Pat, Josh, Doug, and Sheldon for all your corn and soybean seed needs. Back once again as we bring you to post game here tonight, being brought to you by Clay County National Bank, B and D Sandblasting and Painting, and State Farm Insurance. David Borgany, agent. The Clay Center Tigers lose a 35-14 ball game, Chad. But they have to leave this place. I know losses are bitter, and when they're to your rival, they're bitter, and you can talk about a lot of different things. But at some point in this week to come. They should build some real confidence toward district play out of this game. Absolutely. You know, you can you can really dislike the term moral victory, yeah. you know, or whatever you want to want to take out of a defeat like this. You can really dislike that. You can say, ah, that, that's overrated and what have you. But inside, inside, there's some confidence on, on every one of those players on different things that happened back there. My heart's breaking for Tyler Young. I don't know what his injury is, yeah, I but I watched him over there at the 40-yard line just standing there by himself in his game. You know, so he so wanted to be out there. But what you said is exactly right. This was a hard-fought, typical Abilene Clay Center game. Abilene's really, really good, and we showed that we're pretty good, too. And I, I guess that's why I stopped myself from saying they can feel good about this loss. Yeah. 
you don't feel good about losses, but you can sure gain some confidence towards what's to come. And really, right now, district championship play begins Friday at home against Goodland, a trip to Colby, a trip to Concordia. And then maybe if you can keep your play up to where you, you've got it going, uh, that may be a trip back at home for the, the, the postseason. You know, you can find things in every quarter. You can find things in every part of every quarter that was really, really, yeah. really good that you can take a lot of on both sides of the ball. And our line out there today, our, our backs were amazing. But part of their amazing just came from our line. Our line was in a battle up there against a bigger guy and for the second week in a row. By the oh, way. my goodness. Yeah. And, and they were playing like they weren't playing against bigger guys. You know, and that's the thing Coach Rice said coming out of the Wamego matchup. He said, our guys aren't looking across the line thinking about what's there. They're just doing their job. <laughs> and it looked like it tonight once again. If you look at this uh, ball game for the Tigers, uh, you get uh, 72 yards from Murph Wallace. Cade had uh, 16 carries. Adam Ebert, 15 carries, 59 yards. Those two guys scored the two touchdowns. Tyler Young, we mentioned, just one carry, 20 yards, and went out with the injury. Hunter Mullen had six carries, 31 yards. Riley Griggs, seven carries, 14 yards. Caleb Mendham, we mentioned his name a few times. You know, next man up right over the Tigers. A lot of guys doing some good work. Mendham had four yards on one carry. Um, Wallace with 37 yards passing. Uh, Brumfield had an eight-yard catch. Ebert a six-yard catch. And Milliken that late 23-yard reception downfield. And we haven't even talked about what happened on defense. With Hunter Mullen stepping inside for Gabe Ware. Right. Gabe will be back next week. Right. Anthony Atkinson, Kenny King stepping outside linebacker, played some big moments in this ball game. Uh, there, you know, next man up is you always say that, yeah, uh, and you, you 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 have to because it's what happens in football. But when your guys now respond, now your depth becomes better, and there's a whole different level that you expect to play at. Well, and when you when you talk about depth, I mean, you have to be on your game call and play, play by play because you never know what back is going to be. A, you know what back is going to be in for play center is about like what quarterback is going to be in for K-State. <laughs> you know, you, it, it's almost like that. You got to, you know, I can, I'm over here. I can just figure it out later, but you're calling play by play. <laughs> and we have had a lot of people carry the ball in this football season. And you trust them all all of a sudden. Do, and yeah. that makes you a lot better football team. It's a good performance here tonight. I know a loss, but now district play begins at three and three next week at home on senior night with the Goodland Cowboys, another Cowboys team coming here. Tigers lose 35-14. As always, our thanks to Chet Carlson being alongside Dr. Stats. Barry Carlson, we have our engineer back in on Bernie Fantella. Our post-game show brought to you by State Farm Insurance, David Borgerding Agents, D&D Sandblasting and Painting, and Clay County National Bank. This is Rocky Downing telling you to enjoy the rest of your football